You are listening to the Launch Over Podcast on the Without Your Head Network. Hello, this is episode 11. I'm Sophia Cassiola. And I am Michael J. Epstein. And our third host, King Ghidorah the dog, is running wild. wild, So you will hear the pitter-patters of his feet soon. And uh, speaking of pitter-pattering feet... Our special guest today is Bob Rose, a Baltimore-based weirdo and filmmaker and podcaster. And Bob, well, I, I heard you have feet. <laughs> Does that cover? I do have feet. I have size 12 feet. Do they so, pitter patter? Is that if that's little? <laughs> I would love to see Michael's feet sometimes. <laughs> I I, uh, I I wear eight and a half. I was so, like, that is yeah, almost double. No, Are you serious? Yeah, eight and a half. Wow, now I feel like I'm a giant. Now. Yeah, I never I, feel like that. I'm actually offended now. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. My also, feelings you are hate hurt. feet. I hate feet. You brought up feet. You no, I do. Feet, I hate so feet. I, it's true. For all of yeah. our for all of our uh, listeners, let it be clear that I I have the opposite of a foot fetish, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway, we'll, fetish. we'll be right back in one moment to talk about uh, what we've been watching with Bob. All right, so we are back, and we've been watching a lot of stuff. Uh, mostly, Michael and I have been watching Columbo. Which we're up to season four now. So we watched three full seasons of Columbo, including like Leonard Nimoy episodes and Johnny Cash episode. I love Peter Falk to death. He's one of my favorites ever, but he really is one I of the one of Columbo the greatest actors. He really honestly is one of the greatest actors uh, in my view. He does the, the the kind of acting I really love, which is kind of I mean Well, we were talking about his acting and it's it's so natural, but also eats the scenery to yeah. an insane degree. And it's so weird that he can combine both of those elements. Right. It's a very uh, He's a, a character actor who's also a lead. Exactly. Right. It's, exactly. It's yeah. He's got both qualities. Yeah. And he comes from the, yeah. the I mean, he, he was part of that kind of Cassavetes group. And I just, I think that all those performers in that, in like the Cassavetes films um, are just amazing performers. They're some, they're some of yeah. the most natural, like best performers. And uh, I love a lot of those films. And um, Columbo is no exception to my love for, for right. Peter Right. Well, Falk. I had a weird introduction to Peter Falk, which is the movie... Wings of Desire, which I just rented on a whim in high school from the library, and I loved it. But I did, I totally didn't know who Peter Falk was, and so like all that element of him being like a real actor and playing himself like went way over my head until I watched it yeah. again recently. <laughs> and so now I have like this whole other context for Wings of Desire now, having watched all this Columbo. And we recently watched Vibes too, which like I oh, think yeah. I bring up Hell every yeah. episode. And that movie should be a cult classic. <laughs> it's so good. It is a Jeff cult Goldblum, classic. Cindy Lauper, and Peter Peter Falk going to try to find the city of gold. And they're psychics. It gets really crazy. When, when I was a kid, I Ridiculous. watched that. It was on repeat all the time on cable. And I can I swear to you, I didn't understand it back then. <laughs> But I mean, I there's nothing to understand. The <laughs> it's wasn't, just like, kind of was, like Indiana Jones, but with psychics. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, but I didn't understand for some reason like the sexual tension and oh, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the, the movie has a lot of that. Yeah, you know Peter I mean? Falk and Jeff Goldblum have a lot of sexual tension, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah, they do, right. <laughs> but like as a kid, that didn't read for me. So right. I just thought it was a movie with like three extremely interesting human beings that to look and listen to. Like yeah. all three of those leads are like extremely interesting people to you would just also just at, never you know? expect them to be in the same movie. Yeah. If you hear disgusting <laughs> no. licking sounds, it's most likely <laughs> not, not Bob. Yeah. It, might, it could be Bob. <laughs> yeah, some, some of it's Bob, but some of it is also... It's all happening below the Zoom King zoom Ghidorah shot. the dog yeah, is, yeah, is, uh, yeah. is licking as well. Um, just for, very cute. Yeah, he is a cute. Nobody can see him, but he's very cute. He licks a yeah. lot. He has an so. Instagram, King Ghidorah the dog. King Ghidorah the dog. He, he, loves, he loves Peter Falk. He's a big fan. Yeah. He does. I well, would I would hope. On Columbo, there's a dog that yeah. plays a prominent role. And I read the other day, this is actually pretty funny. The um execs at the network were like, we want you to introduce a younger, like sidekick character. And they did it kind of in one episode. They had a, like a younger detective who kind of was like under Columbo and thinks he solved the case, but really Columbo is just like kind of uses him to solve the case himself. Um and they didn't really want to have this character, so they're like, "Okay, we're not going to have a younger detective, but we'll give him a dog." And, it's and the greatest. so Columbo has a dog from then on, <laughs> and he has the dog for the rest of the series. And Peter Falk, I guess, didn't really want to do it at first because the character had too many quirks already. But then they they got this like basset hound who is like really weird and lazy, and um, he. The the gag in the show is that he never has a name. That he's always trying to. People are always like, "What's the dog's name?" He's like, "I haven't found one yet." The whole time they just calls him Dog, and um, he. I feel like a lot of it is improvised around the dog because I think there's like a scene where the dog wouldn't stop barking, and they're like, 
you know, he just ma- it makes do with They're it. Just he's just telling the dog it. to yeah. stop barking. Yeah. And like, <laughs> and he, he always tries to leave the dog with people. He's like, he's not, you know, he just doesn't like to be alone. And it reminds us of King Ghidorah, who also does not like to be left yes. alone. So he always asks, like, he asks a kid in the in a recent episode we saw, he's like, do you mind just watching my dog for the day while I go investigate <laughs> around here? And the kid is like, sure. And he's like, oh, could you also kind of try to housebreak him? <laughs> yeah. So anyway. So good. Yeah, it's solid. It's solid stuff. Yes. So anyway, I, uh, that's been I haven't watched Columbo since like the early '90s with my grandparents. Hey, so, the time is right. You know what's nice about the time like, is right to rewatch. Yes, yeah, it for Columbo, it's just so um, comfortable. Like in this time yeah. of like, you know, you know, you're gonna get you get like the murder in the first 20 minutes, and then Columbo like is cute and quirky and solves it, and it's just like the same thing every. I mean, the episodes are different, but it's like the same. That's, Thing and I know what it is. Isn't that the comfort of TV though? Yes. Like in general, you're that's already comfort, invested, especially in the old TV. Yes, right. for yeah. anybody who doesn't you know, know about Columbo, too, it's it's what I guess is called a reverse mystery where you basically, as the viewer, watch for the first act, you're watching the murder be committed. So Columbo is not in it, it's like r- new characters. You see a murder happen, and then Columbo shows up to investigate, and he doesn't know what happened, but you, as the viewer, already are aware. So you're watching. Like the mystery of the show is how he is going to solve the murder. It's not the murder itself. Like you're already in on what actually happened. He you always like, knows exactly who did it in the first. Yeah. As soon as he meets them, he knows who did it. <laughs> it's almost more like uh, one of those like action show, action adventure shows from like the like seventies or eighties where like Knight Rider, where they would just show you the villain up front during right, the crime. Exactly. And then Knight Rider has to find him, but you already know who it is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like that kind of. Yeah, thing. I think Columbo kind of kind of started that that uh, form. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, it's, that format. It's also uh, like what's interesting about the character is he's kind of like has no. So one of our friends brought this up that like you couldn't really remake it now because they'd insist on having him have like a broken like backstory or something or have kind of like an arc for how he changes over time. And in the show, he's just like a kind of like a regular like working class dude who comes off as guy. like. Yeah, quirky guy who comes off as like not really smart, but he's actually like a you know a genius. But he doesn't have any real like tension in his story or any kind of like you know there's not there's nothing like wrong in his life, and um, yeah. and that's great. I mean, I think that works it's like for the, the show. Opposite of Luther, but it's the opposite <laughs> of like every other love. show now. Yeah, <laughs> but, right, right. They got to go home and be miserable. Like, yeah, that's like, right. And so, Peter Falk's kind of perfect because nobody can play like. A genius buffoon like he can exactly yeah you know what i mean like um one of my favorite movies ever is murder by death yes if you ever see him as sam diamond like sam yeah. diamond's obviously a great detective obviously he wasn't going far off right <laughs> far, far <laughs> off <that> type <laughs> right. but like he's also an idiot like it like peter falk handles that better than maybe any actor in history just like i think so like yeah he's, there's something wrong with him but he's also just he knows what's going on yeah so anyway we love columbo that's the that's the, the moral of the story yeah my favorite is when people commit other murders to cover up their first murder, and I'm like, no, don't do it. That's how you're gonna screw That's up your the perfect mistake. murder. You're like, don't make do a second the first murder. murder's all nicely planned out, and they really think they're gonna get away with it, and then the second murder is so sloppy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot about murdering people from yes. the show. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice study. Never. Do I mean, a it's also murder. like you can't really do Columbo now because like there's cameras on every street corner and cell phones, so, and it's just too much I didn't, evidence. I never watched it, but did you guys ever watch Monk? Oh yeah, I watched all of Monk. <laughs> uh, apparently, well, does that have any? Doesn't that have some kind of like spiritual successor vibe to it? It it definitely does. Yeah, I think um, you know, I think uh, the character of Monk has like uh, more actual like medical reasons for his um, like he has like OCD and like right, right. Uh, yeah. So like, but it, it is still some of the same kind of quirks like Peter Falk has in Columbo, and just like like kind of the same. Um, Observation. I like the monk character a lot less because I think Peter Falk is like it. It has a subtext about like wor- working class people versus like rich people because it's like yeah. it, almost all of the murders are like rich people who think they're going to get away with like killing somebody and they think right, this right. dumb. This like they're way smarter than this like dumb you know blue collar detective guy who's just kind of like schlubbing around the, the whole thing. And um, I think that's like an important part of the storytelling. And Monk, like Sophia was saying, is just it really is just that he has this like medical issue. Um, but I, I do feel like he does think about like the way he acts and he's like works through certain things is kind of similar to, to Columbo. Um, I like. I can't. Monk I've too. never seen Monk. I've never yeah. seen Monk, so I can't compare. I was just curious if you guys had. I like Tony Shalhoub's also Tony a great Shalhoub. character. Yeah, yeah he's I a love great, him. great character actor. So yeah. 
Yeah, he's probably another good example of a, of a character actor who does well as a lead. You know, like you were yeah. saying with with yeah, Peter yeah. Falk, he probably is in that in that family of you know type type of actors. Mm-hmm. I wish he would get more opportunities in film. Uh, to you gotta watch That'd Mrs. Be... Maisel. Yeah, he's not the lead on it. Though. I don't. I don't want. I haven't watched Mrs. Maisel, but <laughs> it's okay. Not... I have okay. issues with it. <laughs> Anyway, Columbo's great. You have issues with something? <laughs> I'm just I have so many issues all the time. <laughs> I think we can move on from Columbo. Yeah, all right. I mean, we'll yeah. talk about Columbo again. Watch it. Once I apologize we for it. not watching Columbo. No, it's okay. It's on. It's on Peacock for anybody. We're not. We don't get paid by Peacock, but it's free on. Uh, what is that NBC uh, app? Yeah. Yeah, Peacock, the NBC app. It's free. They have the whole <laughs> series on there. Uh, really? Okay. Great. They've well, got a lot of actually. Got a lot Peacock's of stuff got a lot of really awesome stuff. I think. They are doing a lot of free stuff now to like eventually transition to, to, a, to a pay platform, but mm-hmm. there's tons of cool stuff on there, including a bunch of Universal monster movies that I've been watching and a bunch of other stuff. So Peacock is cool if you uh, have a sure. chance to check that out. Throw yeah. another streaming service on my phone. That's whatever. right. Yeah. Right. So I only funny. have 90 of them. I mean, why not? Let's do this. <laughs> we watched a movie because of you recently. It's your fault. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. I didn't like the tone on that. Yeah, Ooh. you shouldn't. Okay. Giuseppe makes a movie. Oh yeah, you hated it. No, 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 no. it was just, fascinating. Just kidding. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, uh, it's a kid. Oh, I don't know. The tone was weird. Was... <laughs> We're just teasing you. Oh, you okay. describe it. No, he, what uh, was he famous from? What? He, I mean, he was a child he's, in, he's in. He's the he's like Day. the stoner kid in Detroit Rock City. Yeah, and he is Randy Quaid, one of Randy Quaid's sons, the younger one in Independence Day. Right. Yes. So, so he became like kind of an outsider artist filmmaker. Who like lived in a trailer park in California and like just made movies with all the homeless people that were around, yeah. and made like forty of them. Like I don't know, there's so many, <laughs> and then like this... so many that he's like willing to just throw them away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know. And this movie like followed his like two days. Sh- I loved him. He was like nobody's ever made a movie in two days before, which is so quaint now because this is like 2005 or something. That right, shot right. Us. Yeah. And now everybody's like, I'm making a movie in two days, and I'm like, right. that doesn't make your movie better. <laughs> But no. anyway, the documentary. I don't think he was him. saying it like that. Do no. you feel like he was saying it like no. that? Like, it I was think... just so funny because the whole time he's like, nobody's ever done this before. No, I, <laughs> right, right, I think they yeah. probably had. <laughs> I think right. he was trying to say he he just wanted to be his like singular self and not be influenced by anything else or like worry about the rules or you know. I appreciate that. I I don't think he was like I'm the greatest filmmaker of all time. He was like I want to make no, art no. the way I want to make art, and uh, I love working with these like weird quirky homeless people. I write the script in one, you know, stream of consciousness sitting, and I just like read, feed them lines one by one, and like I don't want it to be polished in a different way. Like that's what I want to, you know, that's that right. was his goal. Um, so yeah, I don't. I mean, I you, came, I came to him because my friends had a like a marathon of Giuseppe Andrews movies. Okay, mm-hmm. I watched in one day. I watched three Giuseppe Andrews movies, which it was really hard. It like I, I like I, I I totally dig what he does, but. To sit through three of those movies in one day was uh, like really difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just people screaming. Like <laughs> then I, it's just people screaming in a, in hotel rooms. And then like I go, I see the documentary, and I found the documentary so profound for me that it made the movies more watchable. If I ever return to them, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dad, like, what, how, what band was his dad in too? I felt like the dad he was like a was session like, player. He was like a session, uh, session player guitarist. in like a real band. Though. Yeah, I can't remember if it was. It was like it was like a real big seventies major band, major band yeah. like psychedelic band. Um, I for, I can't believe I forgot. It's been like a month since we watched it, but I found him to be like the most endearing character in that movie. Like his oh, dad yeah, just yeah. drives him around. And he's like, "Here's a hundred bucks, make your movie." <laughs> Like and he's like, he's like thirty. He just believes in him. Yeah, it's yeah. so sweet, yeah. you know. And he believes in the creativity, and he like keeps all of like his because he would just throw out his movies probably, but his dad like keeps them all in a storage thing. I don't know. I found him to be like the best part of like that whole situation <laughs> with the right. dad trying to like be the glue. <laughs> what What did you? Because you recommended the movie to us, and I'm, this is not like a a, a leading question, but what yeah. uh, what about it did, like inspires you, or what about it do you find you know compelling? Well. First, let me say that the reason, not only did I watch that marathon, but the reason I came to it is because it's directed by Adam Rifkin, and I'm a huge fan of Adam Rifkin. Right. And I actually interviewed him once, so like, I have his phone number. It's like I know I've talked to Adam Rifkin on the phone. He's a cool guy. Let's call him right now. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. yes, let's do it. Uh, no, uh, what inspired me most actually is something he says right at the beginning when he talks about indie film, 
when he's like, they always like he says something like, I had, now I haven't watched it in a little while. Yeah, but he says something like, um, whenever anyone calls like something an indie film, and then you find out that it's like five million dollars and it has all these name stars and these crews and all this stuff, and he's like, that's not an indie film. I'm indie. Uh, what I do is indie film. It's me and a camera and nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, and I was like that. I kind of agree with that in that, like that ethos is somebody who doesn't spend money on movies I make. You know what I mean? Like, and right. then when people tell me they're an indie filmmaker, like, yeah, we just got 500 K for this. And I'm like, well, that yeah. is low compared to Hollywood, but that's a lot of money. You know, yeah. like that's not, that's a different world. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's what he was trying to say. Like he's living in a different world than the one he's seen both sides of. Right. Well, that's actually maybe what's most interesting about him is because he had been in huge blockbuster movies, he had gone through that whole system of like seeing how they're actually made. (laughs) And then he's like, well, I'm just going to do my own thing over here anyway. And then like the maybe the weirdest part, like after watching the documentary and then looking him up is like he just kind of dropped off like the internet and everywhere nobody can find him yeah. now and there's like reddit threads I, I being like, like maybe he's in texas unknown. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like his whereabouts are not known right now yeah like yeah i saw him that and the girlfriend disappeared somebody had tracked know, him down weird. at some point i think he lived in like arizona and they said he just he just said he didn't want to be bothered like he didn't want to be yeah. famous or bothered by anybody so it's just a, i think he's alive and, and okay but he yeah. just didn't want he doesn't want to you know doesn't that's fine. Yeah, sure. Let him let him disappear. Yeah. I don't when when I was when I was watching one of his movies, my buddy said to me, he goes, he's like, look, look at all this stuff. This guy's got now back then. Now I, I'm talking about I'm going to talk about trauma like from five years ago. Yeah. Not trauma now. Uh, he was like, look, he this guy's got like five movies on trauma, like released by trauma. He's like, how come you don't? Your stuff looks <laughs> way better than this. <laughs> yeah. And you're spending the same amount of money as him. You know what I mean? And I, that right. kind of inspired me. Obviously, I didn't do anything with that inspiration, but that did inspire me. Because I was like, you know what? You're right. He's got like five movies released by Trauma. And you yeah. you also and, could have five movies yes. released by Trauma. If you- <laughs> I know. I know. That's uh, Back then, I cared about that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. sentiment. Yeah. Uh, that's, I realize how not impressive that is now. We just so watched uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man last night, starring our good friend Bill Whedon, who probably will listen oh, yeah. to this. Yeah. It was fun. So Bill Whedon was in a movie that we haven't finished that we shot back in February called The Once in Future Smash. And so we got to work with him and he's so great and so fun. And so like it was fun to watch a movie that he did like 30 something years yeah, 30 ago. 30 years ago. Right, right, um, yeah. Yeah, same hair. I mean, his hair's longer now, but <laughs> yeah. like same hair, just him younger. It's so cute. Love same, him. same villainous attitude. Yeah. No, well, he's, he's actually not the villain in our Should movie I say all. like, I'm not trying to trash Troma. I'm just talking about the reality of what today no, is. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you no, can I say think what like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, like distribution wise. Classics yeah. of trauma that we just happened to watch yeah, last yeah. night. <laughs> oh no, no, like, you're not. It, you're fine. It, yeah. It's like how I like I had a friend um, who will never listen to this. So I don't care, but I won't say anybody's <laughs> names or anything. But they had a movie released on Prime. Yeah. And they wrote about it on Facebook like it was literally their big break. Right. Yeah. And they didn't realize it was just whoever made the movie uploaded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like when we were in and bands, like, people would be like, oh, your music's on iTunes. You must be like a really big band. I'm like, right, no. Right. <laughs> yeah. I remember well, like five years ago, I thought having a trauma movie release was like a big deal. Right. You had millions ago. of dollars or. Uh... You're like that person. Yeah. He's like making Fame. money and he's yeah. like famous. Right. And yeah. now I realize the truth of everything. Yeah. yeah it's, you know. There's no yeah. money in anything. We talk, we talk pretty right. extensively on here. We had our, our friend Jason Horton on a few episodes ago and we talked pretty extensively about like the industry stuff and like how it's hard to make money. And so we're, this is actually like, that's right on topic with our, with our interests. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. Um, you know, I, I have the same experience. Like as a kid, like Toxic Avenger was like one of my you know favorite sure, movies. Yeah. And I dr- the dream of working on a trauma movie, and now I've worked on you know I, I don't know five or six movies that that have been released by trauma, um, and I realize it's not it's not a, I mean I, we're not singling out trauma either. Like I mean we are. It sounds no, like I feel but, bad, but, but I didn't want to do it, that. It's yeah. not actually about well, trauma. It's about distri- it's about the whole industry. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. There's not a lot of money yeah. to be made, and there's not a lot of money that trickles back to the creators. So yeah. So, but but yeah, the triumph of finishing a movie and releasing it does not exist in the way it did before. Exactly, that's really a better way to say it. Yes, yes, and and trauma is one one tiny example of that. One tiny example. Yeah, it's not their fault. No, really, even it's not. It's not. It's It's not. The whole industry, the entire independent film industry, collapsed. So, (laughs) why are we making movies? That's the question we should be asking. I I mean, making. I don't know if that's an operative word right there, but is. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know. So what else have we I been mean, watching? Yeah, what else? <laughs> On another subject. So like I, I talked about this last episode too, is like it pretty much there's always some weird like tech weird movie from the eighties, like that shows up in my like Amazon recommends and I always watch them because like I've never heard yeah. of it and I'm like this is amazing. So the latest one that I watched was called Black Moon Rising. Are you aware of this movie? I am not aware of this movie. Okay. It was written by John Carpenter. It's the first script he sold that wasn't like something he made. But he didn't he didn't make the only the involvement. Not he wrote not involved it. in making it. Starring Tommy Lee okay. Jones and Linda right. Hamilton. So this is post Terminator. Right after Terminator. Linda yeah. Hamilton plays like a badass car thief. Awesome. Oh shit. Okay. Tommy Lee Jones gets mixed up because he's like hi- he's like a thief, but he's hired by the FBI to like steal like a micro disc or something. And okay. then he hides it in this like one of a kind car, like because he's like being a prototype chased. of a car. And so like and then he has to go find this car again to get this microfiche back. And then like Linda Hamilton had already stolen it. All these bad guys, Classic whatever. Classic microfiche story. Yeah, like. exactly. Very, very <laughs> awesome. Very 80s. Very so 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah. But it's like Tommy Lee Jones in like a leather jacket like running around, like them like having sex in Linda Hamilton's apartment. And somebody like else was saying like it has like some Fast and Furious, like things that we thought were invented for like Fast and Furious, like jumping a car between buildings and stuff. Like it's all in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so all these car chases and stuff. It was a really fun movie, I thought. Yeah. If you like 80s, like ridiculous kind of Absolutely. action, action spy, sci-fi kind of movies. It- I never would have thought Tommy Lee Jones had any sex appeal at all until this movie. And I'm like, he's not bad. He's not great. But he's okay. <laughs> Guess you never saw Hope Floats. No, <laughs> no I'm not. <laughs> King Ghidorah is going nuts today. Usually he settles. He, he settles early in the podcast. I'm enjoying it, honestly. <laughs> I've never. This is like, so. Anybody who's hearing licking and biting and scratching, he's just going absolutely. Is ancient. it my voice? Is he responding uh, to my voice? I think it is. Yeah. No, he doesn't oh, okay. hear you even. Yeah, with your own headphones. Oh, he, yeah, he oh, can't yeah. hear me. What happened today is Michael had another meeting. I did, and so he ignored him all day. But and like, so King Ghidorah only had to hang out with me, and I took him on two walks. He's like biting him and running him <laughs> over. Anyway, so he's very lonely because he, he had to hang daddy. out with me all day. Yeah, it was very rude. So yeah, he's like literally biting Michael. <laughs> I mean, fr- friendly, not friendly, like not, 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 I guess. Not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not hurting me. It's not a video show. It turns no. out he wants that taste, man. He, he wants does the taste, but it's okay. Anyways, I'm just saying that because if you hear like <laughs> crazy licking and biting sounds, this is part of the show. He is one of the hosts of the show, oh my God. and That's the way fine. the way he inter- no, I'm not. I I mean, I know you know it's fine, but I'm saying for anybody else. If you hear, if you're like, why are there all these weird licking sounds? It's part of the show. It's part of it's part of the design of the show. It's also me. I'm sitting in like a you know like a baby's bathtub right now. You can't see it. But <laughs> yeah. So if you hear any splashing or anything, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah, stolen cars. Tommy Lee Jones. So good. Highly recommend. Yeah, that sounds Black awesome. Moon Rising. I need to watch it. It's a weird title. Um, just reminds me of Credence, but uh, yeah, totally worth it. Free on Prime. Uh, I watched Happiest Season. I feel like I need to bring this up, like how basic I can be sometimes. <laughs> wow. But I just, I had to watch it because like, because of Shit's Creek, which you know, Michael, like almost didn't allow me to watch. I had to That's, watch in the dark I, I don't, by myself. I'm, no, no, I know my, I, I'm aware that Michael is wrong about Shit's Creek. Yeah. So. I, so, I don't like people. I don't like like annoying people. So it's it's like an entire show. They're very of intentionally annoying by the people. End. Yeah. Well, Moira Rose is my personal hero. Um, so Dan it's, Levy was yeah. in Happiest Season, and I kind of like Kristen Stewart. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch this. As everybody says, like that relationship is so stupid. Like she needs to get rid of Mackenzie Davis. Like like nothing about her character at all is like, why would you want to stay with this person? Like, so anyway, I, I agree I with not, everybody else in the world. I, Date Aubrey Plaza. No, I didn't want, I, I no, don't Michael know. took oh. a nap yeah. <laughs> during the debacle, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> we hadn't started the debacle yet and Michael went and took a nap. And I was like, well, I guess I'll watch this movie. I know he won't watch. I, I will not watch like a Christmas <laughs> drama for... I mean, the thing Dan is, Levy, I would t- okay. One of my friends said it was basically the lesbian Get Out, and it literally, like, the first half <laughs> did feel like Get Out, and like that it was gonna turn into a horror movie, and that would have been amazing. Uh, and yeah. Dan Levy was like totally the TSA agent friend, like he's literally tracking Kristen Stewart to see where she is, and like calling her and be like, "Did you know you're in a building like women weren't allowed in until like the 1960s?" <laughs> and like just weird stuff like that. So he was very endearing. Um, and if spoiler, it had uh, you know body st- lesbian body stealing. That would be amazing. I would have watched it. Yes, with Aubrey Plaza <laughs> doing the body stealing. Yeah, like all good. Let me just say this. Uh, 
I I'm basic as shit too. I'll watch that stuff. Like that doesn't. <laughs> It, now in 2020, I wouldn't, but like in a normal year, I would totally watch that crap and waste and, and like watch new like Lifetime movie Christmas movies. I've done that, so don't think you're alone. I've long never done any of that. <laughs> oh yeah, I do all that shit. I love I love Christmas movies, so I, I, yeah, I would. There's a movie I really there's a movie I really really desperately want to talk about. I'll give you a hint, and I'll let you I'll let you uh, guess what it is. Okay. Uh, Pia Zadora. Do you already know? Voyage of the Rock. All right, aliens. you already know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I, yeah, it's a. I, I don't. I'm actually. I, I posted on Facebook, but I am angry at every single person I've ever known in my entire life because they, nobody told me about this movie. Uh, and I think you, 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 you want to talk? Why don't you talk about it? Because you've, you've well, done extensive work on it. I feel like no, I have not done extensive work on it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just know you guys know my friend Sean Jones, yes. uh, uh, director of Camp Killer. There yes, goes yes. Plug for him. Um. He's a huge fan of that, and he's made me watch it in his own home twice, <laughs> as well as we have screened it with our screening group, Mondo Baltimore, publicly. Cool. So I've had ex- I've at least watched it three times because of him, and of course I love it. It's right up my alley. It makes literally no sense. I love the way I love the way it looks, and the backstory is absolutely insane. Like, like the, ba- the fact that it, it exists as like a gift to a trophy wife, right? In the eighties, like it just. It shouldn't even been a movie. It should have just never been filmed. <laughs> right. Why wasn't it just a giant party and not? And why was it a movie? <laughs> like it, it didn't need to be a movie. It's really true. But you know what? The music in it is pretty great. Uh, it has it a lot is. of really no, cool the songs. Good. And um, I feel like there's, you know, I, I I have a mixed feeling about musicals because I I like there are certain musicals I love. Like I love good musicals, but then there are a lot of even very well received musicals that I don't enjoy at all. And I feel like yeah, give me like give me give me two musicals you love. Well, recently we watched uh, Cabaret and Guys and Dolls, and both I, I thought were okay. awesome. I thought they're really excellent okay. the films. The film versions I've seen both versions, yeah. uh, very not like on Broadway, but I've seen live you know presentations right. of both those as well. But then you know we, I watched like Pippin recently, and I, I you know there's like a lot of stuff that I just don't really care for. Anyway, right. lo- long story short, I think there is not there have not been enough crazy out there movie musicals where people are just I- investing in in wacky ideas like i love the apple i think we've apple's you, great you know i mean again Phantom of the Paradise. so so, so uh apple is like one of the worst ideas ever put on film but it's <laughs> but it's amazing it's a great movie Voyage so the same we, we screened the apple with the same group that we did yeah and literally we had to turn it off midway through because the audience was starting to re- like revolt. Us. <laughs> really? Yeah, like it was that bad. Like we were like, okay, okay, we'll we won't come back for intermission. We'll put something else on. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, like uh, that was one of the weirdest screenings I, we've ever had. It's <laughs> like usually people are too polite. I feel like to it's like... so enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it was a pretty rowdy. Like it's a pretty rowdy event. So. Yeah. yeah. That's weird because I feel like the apple is so enjoyable for like. You know the the wackiness of it, and the t- let's say like, this: I wouldn't have turned it off, yeah, yeah. but the people in charge of the DVD player. Did. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, anyway, so, so the Apple, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the Apple's great. Voyage of the Rock Aliens, I, I love it. I think that there's really a shortage of those kinds of films, and it, watching that made me be like, I really want to make a film like this, which I probably will never do. But um, I mean, it's not a cheap movie. No, it's not. It, yeah. That's the it's problem. not like it's a B movie, but it's not cheap. It's not like it, it was made, you know, it's not like Giuseppe Andrews or something. It's like there's money there. There's a lot of people in it. Just nobody knew how to make a movie. They just said, I want to make a movie. And they did. Right. <laughs> like that's, a, yeah, it's not, and, it's a good, I, I love the effects and everything. And the premise is that like these aliens come, um, why do they come even? I'm trying to even remember. Like why do, Dude, they, I don't they, remember. They, they love, they love rock music. Right, they're yeah, coming they because like come. they like in the beginning it shows. There's actually a random scene in the beginning with Jermaine Jackson, Jermaine on, like, Jackson on like a right. different planet, right? Or no, or yeah, yeah. I, I, there's something I can't even remember. No, maybe Piazzador is in that scene too. But anyway, Jermaine Jackson has like a big performance, like music video scene in the beginning. But she's for, in it with him. She's yeah, she is. Together. Right, right, right. So yeah, it's, I don't. Yeah, it, it seems totally unrelated to the rest of the movie, but it's an awesome scene <laughs> where like he's in it. It's like a music video. The song is great, and I'm like, oh, this Jermaine Jackson character is pretty cool. And then I think like. They ran out of money to pay him or something, and like he just is not in the rest of the movie. Yeah, they're just like, oh, he's yeah. not in the rest of the movie. Um, but the guy from Nightbreed is in it, uh, Craig uh, Sheffer, is that I believe his name? Um, yeah, I think so. And 
Uh, the voice of Optimus Prime is the robot, Frank. Oh Walter, my right? God, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So it's just a, a very weird collection of like kind of like the B list from that era or in a, this movie that makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to see a, like a really wacky out there uh, rock musical with Pia Zadora, uh, this is the movie for you. I think it's the only movie for you. It, it has this one part where like. They, fa- I thought it was like kind of genius, like stuff I wish I thought of. Where instead of like teleporting like Star Trek, they fax the aliens to Earth, right? And they come out, <laughs> and they come out of this machine, and then they like inflate them to be <laughs> like a human shape again. I was like, the- I-, I wish I, I thought that. of that. That is, yeah, good. I wish I thought of that idea. You know, yeah. Like it there ha- is stuff in it that's kind of clever. It's, just- I, it's very. I think the whole movie is very clever, but you know, <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, what do I know? It's hard to like. You don't want to like. Spoil it for people. Like, watch it. You just need to watch it. Is there, are there any f- movies that you saw that you want to talk about? Uh, sure. Uh, well, you know what? Is this weird to say? I watched Magnetic. Wow, that's weird. So you say? <laughs> Do you have a, some, a, a human watch Magnetic? All right. Well, I'm let's at, let's set up. Magnetic. I'm looking at Letterbox. Magnetic let's was talk- directed by Michael and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Okay, this is a good plot. It, it is a Christmas movie. It takes it is a place Christmas movie. in the week between Christmas and New Year's, so it's a good movie for this time of year. It has Christmas lights in it. <laughs> right. It has an Egyptian god sun cult. Just right. like Christmas. It has, tra- it has goats. It has, it has goats. <laughs> no, sheep. sheep. It sheep. has, has a goat skull. Sorry, sheep. sheep. Sorry. It has a goat oh, skull. It does have a goat skull. It yeah. has uh, tr- transporting pods. <laughs> I it's just like a lot. <laughs> so for anyone listening, when I said I wanted to watch it, because I think you had like a really good review on you posted a really yeah. awesome review. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's like kind of the one I hadn't seen that you guys have made. So I was like, where do I see it? And then you guys sent me the non we won't talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys sent me a good version of it to watch. And the first thing you always do is you're like, it's really long and boring and makes no <laughs> sense. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think I said it was like, long. You totally I don't think I said it was long. I think I said it was slow. I think I said it was slow. No, you said it made no sense. You were like, you said it's long and it makes no sense. I mean, I I remember just looking at my phone and was like, does he not, should I not watch this? Like, (laughs) (laughs) no, that was a recommendation. No, one of my favorite memes is that Japanese director, and I forget his name. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I make movies that make no sense and no money. (laughs) I just feel like so seen by that (laughs) quote. (laughs) And Magnetic is maybe the most. Make no sense, make no money it's, movie that we've ever made. It's a commitment. I do like it, it though. I, I don't think it, okay, I, I don't want to, it didn't make no sense. <laughs> it made some sense. I got some themes from it. Could I write them out on a piece of paper? Maybe not. <laughs> but like I got definite themes in there. Uh, and I would say that it definitely looked way beyond its uh, means. It looked good. Oh, thanks. We got a lot of stuff for free. Thank you. Yeah. 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 No, I love the pods. Especially. Yeah. yeah, we had those built for it. We had those built cool. by a woman yeah. back in Boston named Katron, awesome artist. But she did like, like she worked on like all the Adam Sandler movies, like building like <laughs> big sets and, and you know, like painted like- walls, and you know she would like airbrush vans for Adam Sandler movies. Like so, she was pretty cool. Yeah, and she took her like a couple months to make those pots. <laughs> I'd love to see Adam Sandler's magnetic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes even less sense. Right. It makes even less sense, and it's more artsy. Yeah, yeah. But I think you no, know, I, you know, I, it's weird talking about your own movie, but that is something that I watched that isn't like to use Sophia's word basic as hell. Recently, you know, like the, magnetic was one of those things because in 2020, I mean, I guess unlike you guys, maybe I've been way more about comfort food. I guess Columbo's comfort food. Yeah, but I've been way more like. Like today, I watched Austin Powers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just yeah. sitting there doing other stuff, and I just put stuff on in the background. I'm not paying attention as much. I think. Yeah, we but, watch a lot of that. We we do watch a lot of that kind of stuff. You know what we, I mean? I just watch yeah. like stuff that I know. I did watch, rewatching like the first time in like 20 years, Great Balls of Fire. Oh, cool! I don't think I've a, actually seen that. I don't think I've seen that. Which either. was an interesting rewatch because as a kid, and for anyone that doesn't know, Great Balls of Fire is the auto is the biofilm about. Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, starring Dennis Quaid and Winona Ryder. Um, it's from like 1992 or three, and it was a flop. But it, I used to watch it all the time as a kid. Like I, I don't know why it was just on cable all the time. I didn't even understand what I was watching. I just liked the music. And now as an adult, I'm watching it. And anyone who doesn't know this, 
Jerry Lee Lewis, he's pretty problematic yes. as a human being in general. <laughs> and the whole movie, while I still think the performances are awesome and everything, like the whole movie is about the whole controversy with him yes. marrying Young his 17-year-old cousin. cousin. Right. I think she was like 13, you know? right? I think she was like 14 uh, when they started dating uh, or something. Like, I don't know. By the time they got was, married, maybe she was like 17. It's, it's bad. Like that. It, it's it something like that. It's bad. It's like it's like not – it was legal but not okay, not cool. <laughs> yeah. right. and it, like it wasn't cool and like the movie, it, it's a, pretty much about how he went to England, England found out, and then America found out. Like England was not okay with it and then, you know, and that's what the whole thing's about. And uh, I'll say this, uh, Dennis Quaid, his performance is hilarious, but <laughs> – and watching it as an adult, it definitely played completely different to me because I didn't get that stuff when I was a kid. Like I didn't understand. Right. So wait, is Winona Ryder playing it, the wife, like that he marries the girl? She, yeah, yeah. Wow. She, okay. At the time, she was like she was eighteen at the time. I kind of googled it afterward to see what people said back then, and at the time, Dennis Quaid was thirty five, mm-hmm. and she was eighteen. So even the movie itself was like, well, they have to make out and do sex stuff, and it's like. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it played totally different as I got older. So that was right. kind of interesting for a movie that I had watched like a million times as a kid. It messed you up. There you kind go. Of an aw- yeah, I mean, it's an <laughs> awkward thing. It was a. It was a. I don't hate the movie though. I don't think like I. I don't think it was like malicious. Mm-hmm. I think it's saying that he was definitely not okay, but. It ends on like a positive note, which makes it like, uh. yeah. <laughs> back yeah. back it, to Columbo it, though. <laughs> yeah. The episode oh, yeah. with Johnny Cash is like Johnny Cash plays like a country singer that like has inappropriate yeah. relationships with young girls, and like I was like yeah. talking to Mike, I was like, I can't believe Johnny Cash like agreed to play this role. <laughs> it's like it's acting. You I know, know it's, it's not acting, like... but like I would like not yeah. feel cool with that for my image as a musician, you know, like to do that role, but. He did it, and it was creepy and gross. Maybe Columbo back then had that kind of, like, draw. Like, yeah. Really oh, yeah. I guess I would do literally you know? anything to go back in time and be on an episode of Columbo. I'd be on Columbo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally anything. I mean, it yeah. is weird because if you're just a regular actor playing, like, a weird role like that, it's one thing, but it's Johnny Cash playing a character Who's like that's just almost so like beloved, himself. You know? And yeah, the songs in it are his, are his songs. songs. Yeah, it was just so close to, like, Johnny Cash. And then for the storyline to be like, he's a creeper. Yeah. Ooh, it was gross. Yeah, but it was a good, I, a really good episode. I probably would say no if I was Johnny Cash. Right? Yeah, I was just like, just write me yeah. something else. Like you're Johnny That's Cash, what, you can like, demand that. Like watching that movie, I was kind of like the whole time I was like, like I get why you'd want to play these songs because they, I mean, they, it is good music, but like, why would somebody say yes to this role? Why would Dennis Quaid want to do it? I mean, Dennis Quaid's yeah. kind of a creeper now, anyway, right? But why would you say yes to this? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's a whole movie about you falling in love with your cousin who's underage. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it was the 90s. I don't know. But. A- acting is like a weird thing, right? It's like deciding what, you know, whether the, the role, even if it's a bad role, because like many people play characters who are not great people. And it's right, a question right. of whether like the movie does something positive or not. And I think, you know, Great Balls of Fire is, is tricky because I'm sure, it, like you're saying, it's, it's a little bit sympathetic. I mean, maybe that's okay. I, I haven't seen the movie. I'm not. I don't mean to judge it because I just. Don't I, know. But. I'm not recommending it really, yeah. but I don't think like you. You're always a theme guy. You guys, you, right. both of you, right? You're really yeah. about theme. I think that if there was a theme against him, it's like pro Christian. So even then, it's like yeah, it th- doesn't work for. I me. don't know how that would read to you. <laughs> yeah. You know? What, yeah, right. Like because Alec Baldwin's his brother in it. Alec Baldwin's in it too. Like it's a pretty killer cast. <laughs> like yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, mm. it just reads. Totally different. We did so. watch Borat partly because of you, I guess. That was like oh, a, that I'm was sorry. like old news. That's like a month and a half ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't because of you. It's because it was part of the cultural zeitgeist, the pre-election zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Okay, I mean, I, right. I know we talked about it. Yeah, uh, already. Yeah, we talked I, you know, about it a bit. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised uh, at how much it was more like a just a a, a comedy movie and less about a political bite or because it was kind of framed. Yeah. It was really like presented and framed and advertised like it was going to be a big like political gotcha movie, and I feel like that wasn't really true. Yeah, most. I think that the marketing, uh, it, I think it faltered there. I think it it leveraged everything against being. Uh, I mean, Rudy's in Rudy Giuliani's in the news. He's having the weirdest third act. Oh my god! Of any yeah. conservative yeah. in the world, <laughs> it really is. And they leveraged that, I guess, for views. But right. I, you know, in the end, like that's not what the movie was. Right. And yeah. I've seen several people note that. They're like, actually, I just enjoyed the movie for itself. 
the parts where he's like like him going to the convention dressed as Trump, that's funny. I'd rather that be in his show Who is America than it be in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, the good like, parts in that movie were more with the daughter and like about like yeah, sexism right. and virginity and like and weird things like that than than about like the, cut, the political think, stuff. Yeah. I mean that's when I political. Talk to you too. guys. Yeah. Right, that is totally. And I think he always does political humor, but like I think I said this to you guys when we first talked about it. Like, it's pretty obvious to me that he kind of, like, his idols are people who made narrative comedy. Right. I think, he, like, as much as he's a genius with that kind of stuff he's doing, I think he really wants to be, a, like, make narrative comedies in Hollywood. Right. And they just haven't worked out. And it's like, you watch the first Bo Rat versus this one. It's like, no, no, that's, that's what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just, he has to do the, like, this is so relevant right now. You got to do this, right? Yeah. If you're you're the if you're Bo Rad, you got to make a Bo Rad movie. It'd be interesting to see Trump, if, right? him move on to you know something that's more like. I mean, I feel like this movie is pretty. Well, stri- he did. Scripted. He did, and it didn't work. Yeah, remember? yeah, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. Like all of his narrative stuff just didn't. Yeah, it didn't, didn't take, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did the great the dictator, and then he right. did uh, the Brothers Grimsby, and none of it really it did it fell, fell all fell flat in America because yeah. he wasn't Bo Rad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He's definitely a genius, though, and I, I do appreciate what yeah. he does. I guess. Yeah. I like who is America is. I think the peak of all of that stuff. If I've not seen, seen that. that, is that a show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a show on Showtime, and it's pretty much. That's what I'm saying is Michael, and you, like especially because what you said, like watch that because what you hoped Bo Rat would be. Who is America is all that, and it's hard as fuck. Like it goes yeah. hard. Like <laughs> it, 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 like it makes conservatives pay for who they yeah. are. Like, yeah. That's, like, well, that the scene where he like asks like this guy at the fancy ball like how much he could get for his daughter for like a night with his daughter or something, and the guy answers him like with a f- know, money figure, and then his daughter is like, "You're fucking gross." <laughs> it was just like the weirdest yeah. like little conservative southern thing ever. I, I, I so I wouldn't just to clarify, I wouldn't say that I was. Hoping Hoping that the movie was that I just expected it. It's like different than what I expected. Okay, it's ex- at your expectation. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. if you so if you like, want to fulfill that, yeah, fulfill yeah. that expectation. I think maybe yeah. I like better. I like the other thing better. I think I might be over the like. You know, I watched a lot of the. I mean, I watched like all the LEG stuff. I watched a lot of the sure, old, yeah, yeah. old uh, Michael Moore shows, which I think were some of them were pretty funny. I don't know if you ever watched like um, yeah, yeah, Awful no, Truth watching, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, Roger and me and all that stuff. Yeah, but no, but even the TV yeah. shows like the Awful Truth yeah, and, yeah. The, and the I forgot the other one what the title was, but you know they did crazy stuff. It was all like it's like political stunts where you do things to just make people like uncomfortable, who deserve it. You know, in many cases, like the my favorite uh, Michael Moore one was when they went to like the tobacco company headquarters and had people who had had like throat cancer and had voice box like uh, you know the. Um, Voice box, uh, electronic right, right. voice boxes, sing Christmas carols outside of the uh, <laughs> the place. I thought that was like you know that's an amazing like pointed thing because it's like all these people are you know right, right, working right. for this. Um, but I don't know that I need more. I think we're in an, in an age where the internet has like made that kind of stuff not really necessary because yeah. everything is about political commentary and political satire. And like every night, Sophia watches, and I I also I guess watch like the <laughs> Trevor Noah and the Seth Meyers yeah, yeah. and the and Colbert. And Colbert. And and so like you know we're getting so much of that kind of stuff. Well, what's that, weird is like I guess they don't expect you to watch all three of those because like they all are commenting yeah, yeah. on the same news stories, and then like there's only so many jokes to make about that. So then often they're making like exactly the same jokes about the same news stories. So, but I do watch them you, all. You, like and like you know geniuses think alike, so a lot of the jokes just are the same joke. Yeah, because yeah. they have writing teams, right? And they're all coming up with the same weak points and everything that these idiots do, right? So it just it gets repetitive. Yeah, it I mean, I, I guess I'd say in Cohen's defense, like he's sort of become like the Weird Al of whatever the hell it is he does. <laughs> like, there's a lot of comedy musicians, but there's only going to be one Weird Al. Like, people only care about Weird Al, you know. Sadly, I don't think anyone else is going to be able to do what he does with a budget. Yeah, right. You're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And, like he has, like he's the only one that has a budget doing it. Like you can go on YouTube and find people trying to do it, and it's like, whatever. Yeah, but. I- I do think if he shifts away from the political like leaders and like when he did the, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I know a lot of it's like kind of, it, I don't want to call it staged, but it's not really presented as what it really is. Like that yeah, yeah. cotillion thing, like the, the, the uh, debutante party in yeah, the movie. Was like that about. was, uh, you know, I read about it. I mean, it clearly wasn't like quite really what it seemed like, but they hired people 
uh, they put out an ad that was like, for like people fathers to and daughters, this, right? yeah, to, to attend this thing. And they knew it was a film shoot. It wasn't like she got into an event that was already happening. Right, right. But it's right. but it's still real people kind of like reacting in the way they would. So it's you know, I, I They thought it was a legitimate thing. So it, that's like the slight thin yeah. line of like, okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate yeah. the humor in that and like some of the satire and like making those people uncomfortable, I think is is funny. Um but well, I, I tell you the, the the thing that made me laugh the most that Cohen did in the last like three years was he did one of those Hollywood Reporter roundtables with like all these comedy actors. It was like Don Cheadle and Ted Danson and Jim Carrey and uh, what's his name, Fonzie, Henry Winkler. And they're all talking, right? And they're talking about their careers and what's been difficult. And then he gets to Cohen and he was like talking about how he was in Who is America. He literally had his aspirations were to try to get OJ to, ad- to admit he <laughs> to admit. <laughs> And like, and then and then he's talking and like you can see like Ted Danson's like mouth is like wide open like he can't and and then and then he starts talking about how he actually had to confront like a terrorist in one movie and, as Bo Rat and stuff and then and like you know they're like what and then Ted Danson's like you know when I had a bad day I just you know do another take yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like Sasha Baron Cohen has literally been in danger yeah and tried to make OJ like cop to murder. <laughs> As a comedian, like it's such a different. I did like yeah. I never thought about it like that, but it's such a different part of the brain, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, what he's doing with comedy, it's like it, he's yeah. actually in danger of going yes, to jail. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is a form of well, journalism. Rudy called the cops on them, I guess, and they oh, had yeah, to run yeah, out yeah, of the hotel. Yeah, yeah. And then, I, yeah, yeah, I saw footage of. Um, there's a part where he sings at like some conservative Trump rally. And like yeah, yeah, they yeah. figured out it was Bora at some point, and then like all like swarmed the stage. And luckily, Cohen had been the one that hired all the security for the event, so they like yeah, pushed yeah. him into his van. And there's like footage of him in his van, like go go go, like, get yeah, out yeah, of yeah. here, because like people are trying to yeah. shake the van. And it's like yeah. definitely he's in danger sometimes, like even in things where he kind of set up the staging of it. Well, when you're when you're uh, uh, I, pranking people, right, yeah, yeah, general, and people you know, will get making, mad. Yeah, so not. Not to plug anybody's YouTube channel, but Lindsay Ellis, she's a great YouTuber. She's genius. You guys would love her. You can. You're allowed uh, to plug. You can plug people's YouTube channels. Oh yeah, Lindsay Ellis. She doesn't <laughs> need my plug. She's got millions of views. But she did it recently. Did a like why uh, Borat was more relevant now than it was then. Mm-hmm. And she talks about how like the first movie was funny because we were all laughing at like the secret underground that we all assume had passed away through time. It was just like there in little pockets. Whereas watching it now, it's so out in the, the open. movie is about something that is completely overtly on the surface, and it turns out that it's like it's like almost half yeah. of the country. Like the first time we watched right. Borat, right. it was like just exposing tiny little sects of people right, that right. Mm-hmm. we di- we didn't think were actually real. Like these are just buffoons that we're yeah. laughing at. Well, and would, now it's not not funny anymore. Right. Like you know, I was saying like, that to Sophia, like watching it with those two guys that he stays with. Who you know have all the conspiracy yeah. stuff about about uh, coronavirus and at that rally where they're singing the like give the you know inject the uh, everybody with the Wuhan flu whatever inject like, journalists it, and yeah stuff. it's just yeah. I mean it's just literally the same stuff I see on Facebook and like the internet yeah. it's like it's not it wasn't even shocking that's no. what I, I said that to Sophia because like the first movie you're like wow when they're like throw the throw the Jew down the well you're like yeah I kind of knew that people might buy into this but I do not see people or hear people saying this stuff. Now the like right. the Wuhan flu stuff. I'm like the president of the United States says States this. He would it. sing this song. Like the president right. of the United States could could easily get up at a press conference, sing this song, and it wouldn't even be weird. I mean, it wouldn't right. even be out of character for him. No. So it's like it doesn't work. Is well, that's kind of what I was saying with the political satire? It doesn't really work in the movie because it's not that shocking. If you, uh, he recently did that. Like the only time he's ever really done a public speech, he recently did. I forget it. What it wasn't a TED talk. Don't worry. It was something else. <laughs> But he basically talked kind of – he was a political dis- talk, right. a speech about his comedy versus what's happening in the world. And he believes in – he's like uh, vehemently – I think the ending of Bo Rat 2 even says this. He's vehemently against like Facebook and what it's done to the world. Like he blames he – doesn't, he doesn't just blame people. He blames information. And like I found that interesting when watching the second movie because like in a way like those two conspiracy theorists he moves in with. I feel like that whole scene kind of was his whole ethos on the whole thing. Like those two guys were nice enough to let a foreign man live in their house <laughs> yeah. and have charity on him, but they have all this such bad information that it's right. turned them into like monsters that they don't realize they are. No. Right. And it's like if they just knew the right 
like I feel like the movie's saying if these guys just had the right information, they might actually have the right decisions and the right compassion. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're just they've been that's the, that's his like I yes. think that's what he's like yeah. driving towards with that. I I'm not saying that's for everybody. They are totally endearing. And like you're saying, like, so charitable to him. And even though he's, like, totally a weirdo, like, you know, it's taking... Right, right, right. Um, but, yeah, but they're just totally wrong. Like, it's just, it's so hard. Right, it, but yeah. it's like if if you took those humans and gave them the proper information in the right. last decade... They would be fine. Would they be different human beings? <laughs> yes. And like, what have we done to these people? We've turned... Our system has turned them into this thing. Yeah. That is beyond... Like, like Michael just said, they're insane. Yeah, like not, and now like Fox yeah. is even too liberal for them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's just it's crazy. Well, We've gone I saw on a, a meme tangent. yesterday that was like two Trump, two Trump supporters go to heaven and they ask God if Biden oh, actually yeah. won, and God says Biden won, and they go, "Man, this goes higher yeah, than we thought." Because yeah, all the way to the top. Yeah, it's like Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I I, I did see right. that as well. Yeah, that's really funny. Aww. Um. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to get political. No, it's okay. Bo rat. Bo rat. I mean, you can't. Political, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's uh, on that depressing note. Should we take a commercial break? Let's take a break <laughs> and then we'll come back and talk about what we've been working on. Because we, we've been both <laughs> collab- on collaborating stuff. on some stuff together and working on some yeah. stuff together. And also, like. And when we are collaborating, we're working on the same thing. Working on the thing. same thing. So we, yeah, don't, right. don't go away and you'll find out what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> Welcome back. We're here with Bob Rose. <laughs> with Bob Rose. Hello. Hi, Bob Rose. Hello, Michael J. Epstein <laughs> um, and Sophia Cassiola. Last week we had, last week, whenever it was, weeks ago, we had Stephen Stahl from the Sick and Wrong Film Festival on the show to talk about this idea he had. Yeah, he bothers us every day, all, all of us. Um, all day. He had an idea to do like a quarantine timed film competition called the 72 hour debacle. And that was film debacle. Film debacle, sorry. Mm-hmm. TM. And that was that 72 hours was last weekend. And we yes. both of us, we both participated separately from our own homes. Also me. Well, I meant Bob and me. <laughs> we uh, participated like, separately. Yeah. Team Bob and then Team uh, <laughs> Sophia and Michael. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So in our respective quarantined areas, all right. participated in the 72 hour film debacle, along with, I guess, 34 teams uh, submitted, finished their short yep. film for the debacle. So. It screens tomorrow, which is nope, going to be today. today, because we're we're, we're filming this, we're, filming. <laughs> we're recording this conversation <laughs> on Thursday night. The debacle is Friday night on Eventive. So if you search "sick and wrong" or "72 hour debacle," I'm sure you'll find it. But it's for free. It's many hours long because some people thought their shorts should be very long. <laughs> um, it's going to go I feel on bad all for night. My, I feel bad for my runtime, and it's not 35 minutes. I know. I, well, I yelled at you earlier. Yeah. yeah. Six I, and I know, a half I minutes. Know. I was I like, think wow. six minutes is, is acceptable. I guess. Ours is three and a half minutes. <laughs> that was I all mean, we could muster. <laughs> yeah. Like, I from I haven't seen, now we haven't seen each other's no, uh, we haven't. products yeah. that we both no, made. No, Stephen told us we weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to. Remember, so we, we follow yeah. that rule. If he's listening to this, which I don't know if he will, <laughs> he probably will. We have not broken that rule, even behind his back. No, we have not done that. No, we're in front um, of his back. <laughs> we're in front of his back. Oh, we would just share it with him seeing it. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm getting the sense that yours has a pretty fast pace. It's like it's, I, yeah. I, I get, I'm getting that sense. Like, it's jam packed. It's jam packed with bad with, with inside jokes and <laughs> right. nonsense. So, so we've never right. done anima- a- a- animation before. Uh, we've so never basically, said the here's word our, animation here's before. Our, <laughs> Can you yeah. say the title? Are you allowed to say the title? <laughs> yeah, we're allowed to say the title. Murderous okay. Space Fatherfuckers. <laughs> Michael named it. I named it. Because I was going to call it Murderous Space Motherfuckers, but then I realized yeah. Fatherfuckers is a better yeah, title. Better. There's, no, yeah, there's, better. there's no fucking in the, in the movie no, at all. But. No, So basically, here's our weekend. Thursday night, <laughs> we got our assignment. <laughs> then we watched Columbo and ate pizza and went to bed. <laughs> Friday morning... We came up with a general idea, wrote that down, got in an argument about how we were going to do it because we were going to do it live action and I just thought it was going to be too complicated. Then Michael took a nap and I went and watched Happiest Season. (laughs) And then I think Michael got up and started working on it. Yeah, as, a, as an animation, and then by Saturday morning we weren't mad at each other anymore. And so then I started participating. <laughs> and then by wait, Sunday, you were, wait, we were wait, done. you were mad at each other on Friday night? Yeah, what? I think so because because 
<laughs> we weren't creatively jiving. Yeah, it's not. Right, I wouldn't right. say mad. We were and just we having. Aggravated. We just did not. We did not align. Part of the problem with Michael and I that we've discussed before is we're both alphas. <laughs> so like, so when oh, one yeah, of us yeah. doesn't defer to the other one, <laughs> we just buzz. <laughs> So, you right, know, and right. so Stephen, like, as we were keeping Stephen updated kind of the whole time that we hadn't even started yet, and he was getting really mad at us. He's like, you've got 72 hours, start right away, get yeah. to it. So 40 Which hours. I have, I have enjoyed his, his like, <laughs> a, anger at you for, like, just wasting an entire yeah. day. I think, I think I actually started, the first thing I did in terms of drawing was at the 30-hour mark of the 72 hours. <laughs> I think I, I finally was like, you know what? I don't know if Sophia's going to participate in this at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the idea that we kind of came up with. I have some modifications to it. I'm going to just, I'm terrible. I am maybe the worst drawer artist uh, in, you know, in the entire From what universe. I've seen, it looks fine. It, it works, it works it fine. fine. I yeah. think it's yeah. cute. It works for the cute. movie, but it's not, yeah. I have no skill. Like if you asked me to draw a realistic drawing of anything, it would not be a good experience for anyone. So I drew some aliens. Um, <laughs> And you know, I had some idea about how to. Do, we we haven't really done animation, but I've done like, but you know, we we do like VFX, whatever, like not yeah. serious VFX. But I mean, I I, I mean, know how to like. Didn't you didn't you like anim uh, my uh, the monkey movie? What's the no? I no. didn't. We had nothing to do with making That's that. You Jim, didn't do that. No. Nope. No. Nope. Darling Pet Monkey. That was all. Jim. We produced great, it. Darling Pet Monkey, a great movie. I loved very much to watch. I saw that second wrong. Actually. Thanks. Oh, yeah, nice, yeah. Our yeah. friend Jim McDonough made that. I was under the impression that you did that. So <laughs> now we I produced am. it. Yeah, we produced it. But we okay. by, by produced, you I mean, mean that we, we just told we gave it to Jim and said make this. And he did. He just did okay. It. Um, it was great. Okay. I had recorded. Well, now I think way less of you. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you should. I had recorded the interview. I had recorded the interview that was used for that. Um, okay. And it was our concept, and then um, Jim was looking for a movie to do, and I knew like that's Jim's kind of style, that animation hybridization yeah. style, and uh, so I was like, hey, would you be interested in doing this story, you know, with this interview? I have this audio, and so Jim really did all the work. Like any any, any credit for anything cool that's on screen goes to Jim. No, I definitely uh, dug it. It's it's really up my alley too with stuff I do. So like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was my type of thing. Yeah, I think he has a similar. I thought you did that. So no, now, no, no, no. So Jim, good job, Jim, yeah. if you're listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he he Great was on job. our he was one of our yeah, early guests as well. He was on a while ago. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've done stuff, you know, in that family of things where we're I I can, you know, roto out an image and move it around in in Premiere or something, you know. But not we haven't you can done real frame stuff. I can keyframe stuff. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, we, yeah. we haven't done any real animation beyond that. But so for this, you know, like it was just about drawing something. And I drew it in segments, so it's like characters. I made like ears that were separate from the thing, and I made eyes that were separate, and then I could move them kind of independently. And I created like you know, like um, we didn't have a lot of time, so it's like I'm not going to really make it elaborate. So I made like ear wiggle loops that I would just stick yep. in, you know, things like that. So mm -hmm. so it's yeah. very primitive. It's a very very primitive. So by the time I came back around, <laughs> he had all these assets, and then I just helped write the rest of the story and yeah. do the voices and stuff. But uh, my favorite thing is like I we were talking about what to name the aliens and I came up with Jif and Gif and Stephen thought that was really funny when he watched it so I was like yes yeah. that's my joke spelled that's the same good joke. Spelled yeah they spelled the same, spelled the same. Course, Gif yeah. and Jif um, I anyway mean, he, I was he, proud of that he did love it he did love it yeah and I was like heart, oh so, that was me yeah. so anyway I yeah. came back around and I helped finish it. <laughs> I ran it over the finish. I mean, line you, with you you know you helped come up with the idea. Well, yeah, and then you my helped write idea. the script. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, end. Yeah. I mean, I just made the assets. I'm like, here's the storyline in general. Here are the scenes we're gonna need, and I just kind of like made those scenes, and then we put the you know we added the audio, and then I moved the scenes around or expanded them or you know built them out of that. But yeah. so anyway, now that, let me ask you: mm -hmm. Did you like now you guys? I I want to say from my perspective, the like I saw you in our in our we have a chat we talked to each other. Yes, and I saw you. Saying that you were procrastinating and it made me feel better about how I felt. Well, nothing I think, against nothing against like sick and wrong or anything, but like I was not motivated to do it. Yeah, and it's not because of Steven or anything like that. Like it's, I think he's done an incredible job. The dice rolling thing to get all the moods and the plot elements out, genius, great stuff. But like as far as my mood, <laughs> like, your personal mood, yeah, I think that like, was I haven't done one of these in ten years, and doing one right now, I was like. I was like, am I? Because I saw everyone else sign in, and they seemed like all psyched, and I'm like, man, I am like fucking dead in my brain. I got nothing. Yeah, we were very yeah. similar. To that. I we think were that really was part of why we yeah. were getting in disagreements too. Is like neither of us really wanted to do any work at all that weekend. 
<laughs> right, know? right. We were just so right. drained emotionally that we're like, no, we have to make something right now. Yeah, it's not laziness. And it's you like have the it whole... even worse because at least we have each other to yell at. Like you just have yourself yeah, to yeah. yell at. <laughs> like it's terrible. Yeah, I guess if you're list- if anyone's listening, my situation is I'm essentially alone in this project. I have no one. And I'm in a place <laughs> that is not mine to mess up or do anything that could harm my environment. Right. So it's not really a great thing to film with. I tell you that. Right. You know, like I yeah. can't do anything messy. I can't. I even got like I'm 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 quarantining with my mother and she even like got pissy at me for dirtying two towels, <laughs> which yeah. I only yeah. put down in case I spilled something. Like it was just an in case, and I got you know. So I knew that I couldn't do anything I really wanted to do. Right. So yeah, it, it, I was kind of like, and then you so know, take like us you guys, through your weekend because I know you you had you wrote something and then I had to switch switch <laughs> yeah, gears. So, I had so um, I I have music that I I won a contest in 2013. I won a timed film contest. It was a month long, and the prize was I had a composer say that I had a composer that would give me 15 minutes of music, and I asked him to give me a a version of classical music. Right? Uh, I I don't want to reveal what it is, but it's a famous classical piece that that is my version that I own. Still, and I've never used it for a short. I've been waiting to. And I was like, I was going to use this opportunity to finally use this music. And I was going to make a narrative short shot by myself in and around my mother's house that was completely conducive to everything you expect from Sick and Wrong. It had effluvia. It had piss. It even had some shit. It, it was fucked up in, like, the actual, like, theme of it. You know, everything. Then I found out it was going to rain all weekend. Right. <laughs> you know, and so I found out it was going to rain. I got to, I, I was the last person to sign in to get their um, plot element and mood. And then I ended up talking to Steven for like, I think close to half an hour or 20 <laughs> minutes, something like that. Which he was starting to get mad at me because I was just wasting my time. But I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything tonight. Like, it's already 1130 or 1030. I'm like going to think about stuff and then fall asleep. But I basically got off with him, and then I had to rethink. I had I had one idea, then I wrote down, a, then I wrote a script to a second idea, <laughs> then a third idea, then I fell asleep at like five a.m. I woke up the next day, and that's when I found out it was going to rain mm. all weekend. And so then I was like, "Shit!" And I had at that point, this is really depressing, isn't it? I was like, I had nothing left in me. I was like, "All right, I got to think of something that's like feasible for me to do and quick." And it came down to. Without, uh, without, like, I, I guess not spoiling it. Are we were spoiling it. Are we spoiling? Stuff? Whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I think it's fine. It came down to me just going, "What is the last thing I'll ever upload on YouTube?" And so I basically just made a fake version of myself, and then just made the video I thought would be my last YouTube upload ever. And it's, I hope it's sort of funny, but mostly it's just I think depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool concept. I mean, I, I like that as a concept. Yeah, I basically f- didn't film my own death, but I filmed like what might be the last thing ever seen of me, and uh, and I'm also completely making fun of myself the entire time. If you don't know me, I think it still works, but you know, you do these things in like a small amount of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, I think also but, with ours too, it's like it's all inside jokes to Stephen. <laughs> So like, right, right. if you don't know Steven and you don't know us, it's not going to be right. that funny. Maybe. I mean, you know, hopefully it reads. It's like <laughs> so it's like yours. If you don't know you, maybe maybe it's more depressing I, than well, it is. For, I don't know. For me, I was trying to be like. I also know, like, I uh, I look like a guy who would say and do the things the way I do them, and like like it's a it's a fake podcast essentially, and. I look like a guy that would do a fake podcast. A podcast about it's a podcast about cryptids. Yes, okay. I look okay. like a guy that would do that. You know, like I have long hair. I look like a neckbeard guy. You know, like yeah. I look like that uh, an overweight neckbeard guy in a basement. So, like, I just basically it works on that level too. So, if you don't know me, it's just a pathetic six minutes of a loser. You know, having talking, talking about cryptids. Yeah. I'm so ready to see sort this. of, sort of. Okay. Yeah, it's it's really, but it's it's very. To bring up something that I was worried about, which you guys are very familiar with, it's very similar to so- soda milk, which is I tried to keep it. Comp- I tried to keep it as separate as I could from soda milk because, like, I know I did that for you know a whole year of soda milk, but like, 
it's the same type of thing. I'm just not, it's not edited like soda milk and I'm not Mike. <laughs> so right, so right, right. for anyone that knows, you can look up soda milk on YouTube uh, or you can look up milk soda, which the, uh, <laughs> well, you guys made. Let's talk about that in a second. Cause I think that's a, okay, that's a yeah, fun yeah. topic, but uh, the 72 hour film debacle screenings are um, starting today, at 6 p.m. Eastern, I think today, yeah, 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Eastern. Yeah. And they run till like midnight or something is a lot uh, because there's, and they're broken into three sessions based on the mood that people were given. So um, we we mentioned rolling the dice. So part of the idea of the film debacle is that two dice were rolled. One was a six-sided die that had six moods, and I don't remember them all. You you got emo, right? I got emo, yeah, yeah me. We, yeah, we, got, right. we got murderous. Well, first we got horny, and the whole right. time <laughs> I was joking with Stephen that I refused to do horny as a topic, yeah, yeah. and then it's literally what we rolled, and I was like, nah. <laughs> He allowed one reroll. I that wanted was horny. Yeah. I kind of wanted horny, horny, you know? Also, like, literally, like, 10 or 12 teams got horny. So it's definitely covered by the yeah, there's a lot of horny. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I I don't know. I'm just a person. I just didn't want to do it. Yeah, I have nothing to say yeah. about being horny. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a middle-aged weird lady. Like, I don't want to cover it. <laughs> um, so anyway, we rerolled and we got murderous. And as I said in the Q and A, that's definitely much more something I know about. <laughs> and since she almost murdered me during the weekend, it, it, yeah, it, would have, it worked. Uh, worked out either way. It worked really well. Uh, and some of the others are like anxious, and I don't even remember the rest of them. But but there, there are six. It, it doesn't matter. There's six moods. And then there were twenty. He rolled a twenty sided die that gave uh, plot elements. So there were twenty different possible plot elements. We got expelling inordinate amounts of effluvia. Which yeah. is a which I think is a, a very nice alliterative. It's easily the funnest to say. Yeah, it's the funnest to say. I think it yeah. just means like a yeah. lot of stuff coming out of a body. But yeah, 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 yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, what was your? So I got emo, which uh, actually kind of went with what I already the ideas that I was already rolling around in my head before the whole contest. So I was fine to keep that, and I also got a person revealing themselves to be something other than human. Oh, okay. Which uh, I did you, like that plot element. I feel like that's a good one. Yeah, it is great, and you know, one like I did it. It's in there. It's it happens, but like also, I wish I, I had different circumstances to tackle that stuff. Right. But I guess that's the part of this whole thing. Like, you know, Stephen made this contest in these contexts so that we'd have to think outside the box. Right. Because right? in my opinion, in my mind, I kept thinking, what would be good for sick and wrong? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole that's all I was thinking about. And then I had to eventually give that up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I had to give up everything, every every idea I had. Even like I said, I told him I wouldn't use stock footage. <laughs> I use a lot of stock yeah. footage. So <laughs> Well, like, Sick and Wrong, I, get, I mean for, yeah. for for anybody, you know, curious who does, is not familiar with Sick and Wrong, it sounds like it's a very narrow idea, but it's actually like pretty broad. And there's a lot it's of broad, like yeah. at, at the fest that he shows a lot of different types of movies. He does. Um, it just you know it just really means like, like something kind of that's that outside defy genre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or just super weird or like it's pretty open, yeah. but it but it it captures. It, we always have trouble with this because we're like people are like oh you make horror movies and we're like yeah kind of but like we do better in the underground world or in the like weird movie world than yeah, we do yeah, in the same. like in the horror world. Like yeah, our movie might be kind of a horror movie, but it's more like underground maybe and so I think sick and wrong is more in the family of like underground strange um, surprising experimental surprising like yeah, kind yeah, of like, me- messed up like yeah. messed yeah. up ideas so, like, right yeah, just, it make you feel weird <laughs> yes I, I, yeah, yeah yeah or or even just it's either that or there's a lot of viscera yeah that's true too there's a lot of effluvia you yes, know what I mean like one or the other like if if it's not fucked up, at least have somebody like shooting poo all over the place. Yeah, right. Like something like that. Which is that. pretty yeah. fucked up. Let's let's face it. It is fucked up. <laughs> and I, you know, I and I, I don't know why, but like everything, you know, the way the contest is and when it's happening, I kind of felt this pressure that I had to like let go of. Where I was like, this has to be a certain thing, and then I eventually just let it go. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do what I can do, and that's. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be. And fun. I, I like what I did. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to insult that. I'm just. I had such a, a weird time defining what the hell I was supposed to do right. in this right. situation. Well, I was even saying to Michael, yeah. like the 48, like for however we felt about it at the time, 
I like with the what they give you, they give you a lot more stuff where it is much narrower. You know, like they give you like a job yeah. that the person does. They give you a name. They give you a line you have to say. And in some ways, that made it easier to write those than like yeah, this, yeah. where it's so open, like effluvia, which you know I had to look up in the dictionary. <laughs> um, you know, it's just like murderous effluvia, and it's like, what does that mean? Like, what am I doing? You know, and so right. it was much more open, which is cool. But in some ways, in these timed situations, like I, I like constraints, and I like. Then working outside the box of the constraints. Sure, yeah. It's a little easier to write. Yeah, we, like you said, we're also feeling a little uninspired creatively right now just because of world, you know, circumstances and sure, stresses yeah, yeah. and whatever else. So, so that's, that was a challenge. But anyway, I think it'll be fun to see. I'm excited to watch all the films. I, I'm um, excited because I like, I, in my mind, the other movies are like all fucking incredible. Yeah. yeah. They're all <laughs> filmic and, and everything. And like, I don't know why in my mind I feel that. Because I'm, li- I watch the Q and As, and I'm like, oh man, they all made these awesome f- things yeah. that are fucking gross and crazy. You know what I mean? I know I'm gonna see there and see like, okay, I'm being. They all made very just what they could do in 72 yeah, hours. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, what, what in my better. mind is telling me that they like, <laughs> like fucking Scorsese over here? You know, like I, I don't know why I'm thinking that. Yeah, I think it'll be so. it'll be fun and interesting to see how people use the time and use the constraints and and everything. Um, and, and just the lack of uh, people. Yeah. Like, a lot of people might have been in my situation too. Where like, you don't have anyone to point a camera at, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> you gotta point it at yourself. Yeah, we had we had, you I don't know, know about you guys. We're we're but I don't we're like slightly that. better uh, in the sense that we have two people, yeah. but it's not like a lot, you know, and a dog. Um, <laughs> right. We don't appear on screen in our film King at all. Ghidorah does. King Ghidorah and your does. Feet do. My feet do. Yes, my feet. I, in I, speaking shoes, of feet. Though. Speaking of feet. <laughs> You, you, you love feet. You love, love feet. feet. My eight and a half. Yeah. My eight and a half shoes up here. <laughs> yeah, right. In the uh, in, in the, the shot with King Ghidorah. Yeah. 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 We right. filmed King Ghidorah for like very quick part of the movie. He. Well, I have well, to well, say, King Ghidorah is a star. He, he is. Star. He, is. he. We needed him to stay yeah. really still, and to look like he was con- confined inside of a box, and. I don't know what it was. We've never been able to get him to like cooperate with stuff like that before. For whatever reason, this time, one take of it, like the the, the last take we did, for like a full minute, he stood like perfectly a still. Statue. And then it was almost looked like we cheated because it's like he's so still. And then he just started looking around like he was inside of a, a, an imaginary cage. It literally cage. looks like he's and in a box. And it's perfect. I was like, That's I was so like, good. you killed it. I can't like, wait. yeah, he, he just did exactly so what he needed funny. to do. I mean, as you know, he's a chihuahua and he does not do anything we told him no. to do ever. I like, and that is the kind of stuff I kind of hope to see from the contest for like what you guys did. I mean, like, you kind of. I'd love to see people make films with their dogs or yeah. something cute and like funny that people did in their in their basement alone. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm kind of hoping from it. For some reason, yeah. my ego was like, "No, everyone's going to make a fucking masterpiece." Well, I, I, I think you'd be right. I, I know. Q&A, I don't think that's true. In our Q and A, there was a guy who lives in Australia who I wanted to strangle because he's like, uh, <laughs> "Nobody here has COVID. I'm allowed to go outside and do stuff." And I was I like, can talk to I people. "Dude, stop bragging over there in Australia. <laughs> you know You're dead to I, me." I have nothing Australia against that guy. Australia doesn't exist. So that's no. a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I liked how Steven was instantly like, Bob, he knew exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, Bob wants to move to Australia right now. Because he was right. He was totally right. Yeah. Nothing against that guy, but that guy's fucking short better be goddamn great. Right? Exactly. Because he no has no restrictions. Yeah. I am stuck here alone. I got myself and I. Yeah. That guy, he had all of his friends, and they don't got to worry about masks and shit. Dude, you better fucking have made a yeah. masterpiece. You better, like, it better be in the Oscars, okay? Yeah. <laughs> The Oscar There's not a lot of Oscar, Oscar competition this year. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like he said that because like Sophia's right. He said it all like meh. <laughs> I'm like, he okay, like, fine. Just, just deliver, dude. In deliver. Fairness, he seemed like a nice dude. We're, I, we're not, he we're seems not, like a totally we're, nice we're, dude. Yeah, no. just so he he sounds like me. he has a cool podcast. Yeah, just so we're not. Just so it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, come we're just kidding because we're better. How you get on a call with a bunch of people like. Like LA is so locked down right now. You get on a call with a bunch of people that are just totally locked down and haven't left their houses in nine months. And they're like, yeah, man, you don't know, we don't worry about that down here. <laughs> I was like, why? You can't talk to us what? like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, I'm dying here. Like every day I feel danger. Are you kidding? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. And it's so funny. I'm just saying, he better deliver. He I can't better. wait. Because if he did something where it's like just him in his house filming himself, I'll be like, <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> but the cool thing about this whole competition is that, you know, I, I'm a I'm a fan. I mean, I'm genuinely just a fan of the of Sick and Wrong as a film festival. And yes. we, Sophie and I talked about this this year. We really enjoyed the like 
because we we watch a lot of film festival blocks, and um, Sick and Wrong is really the fest that had the blocks that were most attuned to what we're into. Yeah, you know, like there are a lot of fests that have good films. Like you know, we watched most recently. I think it was Nightmares, maybe the most recent one. And it's got a lot of like really good horror stuff. But I'm more into like the weird, like pushing the boundaries in, a, in not in just a horror way, but in like a weirdo way. And right. I think Sick and Wrong really covers that. So for Steven to be like, I'm going to do this event. I'm going to inspire 34 groups of filmmakers to make something new that fits in that world. I think that's just pretty yeah, awesome. It's pretty cool. No, it's definitely awesome. He forced and us all to get to work for a weekend. A few people in the Q&As brought it up, but like, I do think that he like we gave him a little bit of shit for like the runtime thing and stuff. Yeah. But like in the end, he really did it well. Like yeah. I've done I used to do these things like 10 years ago. I would do these things twice a year. 48 hours twice a year. I I thought what he did with like the moods and the plot elements was way better how he enacted it. The thing with the Zoom calls and you could just show up whenever and make your own time. Yeah. Like like he kind of cracked the code on this a little bit that no one has. A, like the like the other ones, they charge you like 200 bucks. Yeah. yeah. And they don't give you any of these advantages or and, like do it this way. Like, so he, applause for him. You he know? had custom made statues made for the prizes. Right. And like you never right. got a prize. Like we got paper certificates for the 48 hour, which was cool. Right. Um, but no, he's like custom made like action figure in like the packaging of an action figure like with the plastic yeah. and if we don't win so we're cool. gonna go to Finland and kill the people yeah, who win and, and yeah and that's like another good point well, Australia too. we're just gonna go to Australia <clears throat> just yeah, like, cause I'm not just sure to get to Australia <laughs> just, just to get to Australia I'm I just not, wanna go to Australia okay I just wanna be free of this yeah go ahead sorry well I'm just saying I'm not sure he would've come up with this idea except for the fact that we're all confined to our homes but yeah, yeah, it yeah. made it an international event because he has people from Finland the UK Australia Canada, the U.S., like I th- maybe another country, but that's five countries right there. Uh, so that's really cool, you know, to be in a thing where we all get to watch each other's movies. And I honestly, like I said it on Michael's status, I believe, but I never was, like I had a r- hard rule for 10 years that a month is the minimum contest length I'll do. Mm. for Because I stopped doing these for a reason, because I was like, I don't want to make stuff in 48 hours. Like it's not good in my anymore to me. I got to that point. But you know, the, with the way Steven did it, and with Sick and Wrong, because I love Sick and Wrong so much. Yeah, I'm glad I did. I'm I mean, saying, I, a month I'm is glad too long for me because I will just put it off to the last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like with this, yeah. I put it off to the last 48 hours. I thought that was enough right. time. Uh, <laughs> so I think 70, I mean, I, 72 is a nice, a nice. Uh, yeah, it's a decent it's a nice amount of time little... to get something. Of okay quality done, and I'd it's say. cool yeah. because it's you know it's taking advantage like you said of the of the quarantine uh, situation. I, I, I mean we're not so really. I hope he does like continue to do it um, after we're all out of quarantine because it is really cool that it's like the community built around the festival and around him, but it's a worldwide yes. community, yeah. and the only way this works is like if it is like kind of online, like doing the zooms, and none of us are going to go to Florida to be in his <laughs> in his real well, life. I mean, maybe a, that would be fun, actually, if we all post, went to Florida and just filmed around 48 Florida hour, for the weekend. 72-hour Florida, <laughs> yeah. Florida weekend. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, no, Steven, in, if you're listening. In a, in a vaccinated world, I would still do it. I would probably still do this again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I, I'm, that's what I'm trying it. to say, I guess. Is and I it would, be, it would it. honestly be, it would only be for sick and wrong. Like, some other contest could pop up, and if they're not sick and wrong, I don't really want to. Yeah. I want this vibe or else I don't really have interest in doing a timed film contest. Right. Right. And speaking of uh, making films in quarantine. I guess I'll describe it, and then you can correct me. But Soda sure. Milk yeah. is a project you made with your friend Mike, where yes. he would sit down at his computer for some reason. His computer was always there, or at least in the ones I watched. And he would his have Lenovo. some kind yeah. of a milk and some kind of a soda, and he would pour them together and very monotone like would give you an assessment of what it was like to experience the combined right. taste of the milk and the soda. So, <laughs> yes, that's completely right. That's uh do you want some behind the scenes? Yes. Yeah, we, what we tell did? me why you started okay. doing this. So, one, uh, uh I give the full credit to Mike cuz he came to my house. He, he messaged me one day and he was like, "Hey dude, can you like help me film this thing? I got this idea and I want you to do it with me." And I was like, our, like at the time, I think I might have been, we hadn't talked a lot. Not because anything was wrong, just like we were both busy and we hadn't talked. And he came one weekend, we filmed the first season. And <laughs> so he did a whole laughed. bunch in a row. 
we, we did five. Every okay. season has five, right? Okay. So five episodes. And so we filmed the first season and we ended up laughing so much together that we were just like, we got to keep doing this. Like it became a thing. And it's I, all I can say is like it's it's one of those things where you do where you really don't care if anyone likes it. It just makes you and somebody whose humor you click with completely laugh to death. Like I've never laughed as much as me and Mike have making soda milk like ever. And we, were, we both were like, we don't care if anyone likes this. Somebody <laughs> might. But we don't give a shit. I think that's what works about it. Yeah. But yeah, Mike was just Mike would. Uh, it started out with him. He wrote the like the scripts for the first one. So the first season is, it's all Mike really. I just set it up and filmed it, and then the set, then we started like coming up with ideas to go further and further. And you can see if you watch the entire like I'm not recommending you do because it'll take the fucking. <laughs> I haven't seen them I all. I watched a lot. I should I should I should watch you, them you watch all in them. order. Yeah. You should. I mean, they do have a progression, and yeah. you try to put little like things in there that like you know like little things that you can see that came back from before <laughs> and everything. But like I seep into it pretty heavily by the time it's over. Like mm-hmm. I'm I've so then it's it's pretty equally balanced by like season three and then like. You know, and then we started. <laughs> I started coming up with crazy ideas like the David Allen Greer season, which he did retweet and he <laughs> saw, which is cool. You know, and and then uh, you know, like uh, my favorite season is the one that's most me, which is Soda Milk Two Thousand, which is like the one, the Matrix, like the one? Matrix yeah. season, yeah. Yeah. The Matrix that. season, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, the Matrix season, which is like probably the most of my fault. You know, yeah. <laughs> but that definitely it, felt like you. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, and I, I, we actually got one friend complaining. They're like, "Dude, this is starting to be a little too Bob." Wow, <laughs> like, you literally said that. That's I was a like, verb. Uh. Yeah, it's a verb. But uh, you know, I think me and Mike find products, and we find internet culture funner, funny. So like, and we find the fact that <laughs> nothing is explained. <laughs> if you watch it, you'll find out that there's some team that is making this, that is supporting him. He's getting some kind of company. He has no name that he ever says on camera. <laughs> and if you watch it to the fully to the end, which I don't, I don't think Michael did, but... <laughs> oh, is it King Ghidorah? Uh, if you watch it to the end, I'm just going to spoil it for anyone, it turns out that the entire show was sponsored by the computer that he had on the desktop. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I don't so, think I saw yeah. that episode either. I'm yeah, a really bad the, soda milk fan. I've only seen no, random no, episodes. That's fine. Yeah, it's like the last episode. He like he walks away from a dumpster because <laughs> like everything's been taken from him, and then it fades into. I just downloaded a Lenovo computer's commercial, <laughs> and it just it just fades into it, and it's like so because me and Mike thought the funniest idea was wait a minute, this whole thing was just a commercial for a laptop. <laughs> Like, it was paid for by Lenovo because it was in every shop. <laughs> yes, it is. So, like, the whole thing was a Lenovo ad? <laughs> what the hell is this? Right. Yeah. I love so, that it's Lenovo, yeah. too. <laughs> Such a random... Just, nobody ever thinks of Lenovo. I think of Lenovo. <laughs> I had ThinkPads for years. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> it, yeah, so, like, I, you know, like, that kind of shit makes us laugh. Yeah. More yeah, than anything. Funny, like, yeah. stuff that's... Like, there's... Like, even when I showed him... I showed Mike my debacle short... So he's seen a sneak peek. He was never going to watch it on Friday. He's he works late, but uh, he was he instantly got what I was doing. You know, it's like one of the you know that person you always show stuff to, and he instantly was like asking me questions about the character I was playing. He's like, <laughs> what, what, like what? Every line I say, he's like, yeah. What does that mean? Like, why? Wh- who's doing this to him? You know, yeah. like all this stuff. So Mike totally gets the humor I'm going for. And with soda milk, we were like everything the guy says. Should make you go. Well, wh- why? Why is he? Who? Why is he here? And why is he saying this? <laughs> and does he want to be here? Is this a passion project? <laughs> is it a job? Is and he we under don't duress? Ever tell you. Yeah. I, I right. Like, is he under duress? I like stuff? the one in the yeah. car when he's when he. <laughs> that might yeah, right. be my favorite one when it, when he's in yeah, the car. Yeah, where he's got the suit on from the. He's got like that suit on, right? I think uh, that from sounds the, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Because we because the because uh, the second to last season was the remake season where the first episode was a remake of the original <laughs> right. first episode. And then the second episode was a remake of the first episode of that season. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like oh a fucking God. mess. All right. Yeah. I got to start at the yeah. beginning and watch them all. So <laughs> no. Okay. So now coming back to us <laughs> yeah. and why this is related right. to us is like, Michael and I are like a little bit of pranksters sometimes. And like sometimes <laughs> more so, sometimes. more so Michael, but I end what? up encouraging him. <laughs> 
Um, I really took the heat on that one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. It's, <laughs> so anyway, he showed me soda milk, and he was like, let's not ask permission, but let's like do a fan version of soda milk called milk soda. And so right. I watched, the, basically it's based on the very first episode the most, because well, I, I watched say, that part, one a lot. Partially we've had a lot of conversations about how we don't like, I, I, I have conversations about how I, I'm not a fan of fan films. <laughs> So that's yeah, an important the best part of it. Important said context. That at nauseum, I, I don't like. I'm not. I'm nauseum. not. You know. So do you want to talk about the genesis then? Because well, you kind of roped me into it. You know, if you make <laughs> fan films, great, like, cool for you. People like it. Good for you. I'm. I'm happy. <laughs> We've done tribute things, whatever. I will say, like, Bob, we've met Bob before, Bob, who we're speaking to right now at yeah. Genre Blast, which is, like, if you listen to this podcast, we've met a lot of people that we end up, like, becoming friends with and collaborating with at Genre Blast. I wish we talked more, but yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but then yeah. since yeah. this pandemic, like, basically Steven, who we had on last time, like, got you all to, like, talk about Sick and Wrong, uh, the online version of yeah. Sick and Wrong. Like, like but then, 900 like... 900 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, like, a year ago. And yeah. then, like... Yeah. We just kept all talking in this chat. So basically, we've become, like, I think, pretty good friends. Like, yeah, since yeah, I the talk pandemic. To you guys every day. Yeah, yeah, every day we chat about stupid nonsense. And that's like a nice right. highlight of my day. So it is. That's cool. You know, we've become friends in the pandemic. I like that. Um, so, <laughs> Michael, then back well, to Milk Soda. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think we talked about how we didn't, I, I said I didn't like fan films. And um, I thought it would be funny. I think we, you know, we were all a little down, so I was like, it would be funny. <laughs> this was this was very different. When was this? Like May? We were very. I don't depressed. know. Yeah, we were all. A little this depressed. was like at the peak of the the pan, the first the wave. First, yeah. The first lockdown. We're all, we're the all pretty wave. depressed. Yeah. So so I was yeah. like, it would be funny. I think Bob would find it funny. I think this would fit his sense of humor for us yeah, to yeah. make a, a tr- like a fan soda milk movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and the original idea was not to tell you at all and just to post it and just wait. <laughs> and it could be years before you I found it or no, something. I need immediate gratification. Oh my God, the, that would be fucking incredible. Yeah. if I Because fa- I've gone, now, I like, when we first started talking, I went to your YouTube page right. and I watched a lot of, your YouTube page is a labyrinth of just every era of your just life. Just all kinds of nonsense, yeah. And I watched so much stuff on your YouTube page. I And I'm probably at some point, because you always send links, I would have gone back to right. it, and at some point, I would have run into milk soda. <laughs> so that was the. And I would have been like, and after months of knowing you guys and being friends, I would have been like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, did you guys? That would have been kind of amazing. Yeah, that but, was the original yeah, idea, you know, yeah, but to but, let you yeah. stumble upon it, but we stumble upon, yeah, or get like a Google alert, you know, <laughs> if you've got Google yeah, alerts right. set up for, or milk, just for somebody milk that I know would stumble on it or something and be like, "Did you know that they did this?" Like, <laughs> but the idea was to recreate it kind of word for word uh, with Sophia yeah. performing as as, as Mike. Mike. Um, yeah. And, I, and you then know, King Ghidorah like kind of photobombed it because he wouldn't like leave me alone. So, but then he became like the most popular part of. <laughs> Of as, the milk as soda. with everything well, he does, yeah. People are like, "Oh, look I at that th- dog." <laughs> no, when you got when you posted it, I was like, uh, "I was like, it was funny because everyone was watching." I could tell they were like, "I don't know why they did this, but the dog is so cute." <laughs> like the like because you know soda milk's not for everybody. I totally, we totally get that. It's not for everyone, but like, and you did a really good job remaking it. <laughs> so, so for anyone that doesn't get soda milk, it was like, "Here's the cute dog too." Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, Kinky Door is adorable. All right, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I know that was a that was a very, I really appreciated that actually, and Mike loved it too. Cool. It actually did cheer me up because at the time, you know, it was yeah, nothing could have cheered me up. So, yeah. No, I'm yeah, glad so to hear because yeah, we were trying we were trying yeah. to amuse you. There's basically just a, like a no, like, I love well, that. It was also that, to amuse yeah. ourselves yeah. and just to play a prank yeah. on you. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and like <laughs> I don't when, when we thought you. I don't care if anyone remakes it or anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wouldn't put something on YouTube if I didn't basically give permission to the world to do anything with it. <laughs> well, if we make you know, a like, million dollars on Milk Soda, we'll, we'll cut you yeah, in. We'll, yeah. we'll give you, we'll give you ten <laughs> percent to you. I think you actually have like like nine hundred views on that. <laughs> yes, yeah, somehow. Too. And I we have episodes with way less views than that. So it's like you guys did. You guys have four views and us. <laughs> The key is the dog. You got to get dog, a dog yeah. into the soda yeah. milks. Yeah. Well, when you, me, when you do an, another Mike, season, when you do the reunion we, season, we you get said a dog. like maybe in like five to 10 years, we'll just randomly <laughs> upload something. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't know if it would be another soda milk, but we want to be like the guy accidentally uploads something <laughs> on the channel like five years from now. <laughs> You know, it's, like, it's just like, like him walking around in his underwear and you right, never right. see his face. Like it's, it's like, like a, accident. Butt, yeah. a, a butt upload, like something really <laughs> odd. 
But if we did do more, we would wait a long time, like, and yeah. not explain the the gap in between. Like, why did? <laughs> why is it like ten years later and there's soda milk happening again? You know. So we we haven't decided that yet. And then the pandemic happens, so that we don't talk yeah. about soda milk anymore. But it's up there. I think it still gets views. So yeah, you know, well, anyway. yours got a lot of views. You guys brought views to it. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we tried. Okay, we were you. trying spread to figure out word. how to share, spread, spread, the, spread word. the word, and make it clear that we well, were you know, remaking something too. You, yes, exactly. Because I think some of my friends just thought like we were losing it. <laughs> Like maybe we were gonna like do this as like a new thing, like like a cooking show or something. And I was well, like, you guys, no, it's, you guys, we're doing a thing. I'm doing a bit. <laughs> you have a, you guys have a rep too, and I think that when people saw it, that some of the comments were just like, "Oh, there's another Michael and some <laughs> crazy moment." Yeah. You know, like they're just like they totally accepted it yeah. with your humor too. So. It, 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 it definitely yeah. fits. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was hilarious when I first saw it. I was Thank like, this, you, is, yeah. "This is the most hilarious thing," and I love. <laughs> I mean, the just every, there are so many. I mean, people probably see a lot of different things but just everything from the way it's shot to like him reading off the Dude. screen the performance like just every and as you watch more you get more and more of these it's like that's the kind of stuff i love where it's like the jokes are not it's not like you're telling punchline jokes but it's just yeah. like the details there might of be it. one or two in there but right. Not, right that's not yeah. what it is right yeah. it's like the details of it are just all really funny and there's like I feel like there's yeah. like dozens of details in it. You know, every time it's all about details, and it's like the the humor that is off screen is what actually yeah, is the joke. Right, right, right. Like one of my favorite episodes is one that to- Mike came up with, which is the one in, se- in season two where it's the whole time before the show starts recording, the camera's <laughs> yeah. actually running, yeah. and I don't like the cameraman, whoever that is, because I never show up. The camera's running. Mike sits down. He makes an entire sandwich, like this weird ass <laughs> sandwich that Mike makes. And then, like, I and I almost ruined it because he literally, like, takes, like, he eats the entire sandwich and then just shoves all the shit on the table that, to do with the sandwich onto the floor. Like, that's what he does all the time. And then he just looks up and he goes, all right, I'm ready. And he goes, welcome to soup. And then it cuts because that's when I hit record. So there's no episode. Then it's just him eat, making and eating this horrible sandwich and then dumping all the shit on my kitchen floor. Oh. That like just, shit yeah. like that. Like yeah. that's Good. an upload. As it, like, you know. <laughs> and then me and him find it funny, like, why would they let this be uploaded? <laughs> like, who is letting this stuff happen? Lenovo. <laughs> yeah. Like Lenovo, yeah, like did Lenovo do that? Is that what Lenovo's doing? <laughs> there's just no quite there's no answers, right? Yeah. Well, anyway, so, that, yeah. that, that kind of humor Warhol-ian, definitely hits us. I will say. Yeah. The sandwich thing. Like, have you seen Warhol eat that burger for like ten minutes? No, totally. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I love, I love Andy Warhol stuff like that. Yeah, like because yeah. if that's a movie, then anything's a movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We we always yeah, talk like about that. that like, idea. what what is you know what are what is actually art, and then pranks about what is actually <laughs> art, and then like, I mean, I think we. We, we mentioned, I think you said you love uh, Exit Exit Through the Gift Shop and, and like that kind of stuff. Absolutely, one of yeah. my favorite so, documentaries so, ever. Same. Yeah, yeah that, that's the kind of stuff we're, we're really into, just like the, the philosophy of art and like the idea that you really, it's just really context. Like there's no real meaningful any definition of anything. It, it's just like, can, can I recommend something to you guys right now? Like, sure. I don't know if you've watched it, but have you watched Nathan for you? Have you guys ever watched it? No. No. Uh well number one it's on HBO Max I don't know if you have it do not not I th- presently I'm re- okay well I'm recommending again. this show to you but specifically I'm recommending the smoking episode because the whole the the conceit of that episode is is that he tries to make it legal to smoke in a bar by turning the bar itself into a, a theater establishment by adding seats so people can watch the patrons and if you're in a theater establishment <laughs> in California you can smoke and then he then he goes on to be like then he realizes that some people that watched it said it was actually good theater. So then he tries to remake it as an actual play because he thinks he's an artist. <laughs> so that, like, I love if, that, if yeah. you want to, if you like, literally, if you want to understand, I feel like I tell this to anyone: if you want to understand my sense of humor, watch Nathan. Yeah, Hume, that's that's exactly like how I, I say to you guys: like, what qualifies as a movie? Right. Like, there's a soda milk movie that is just it, it's ninety minutes long, and it's Mike watching a movie. That's a movie. It counts. <laughs> yeah. Now it's it counts it's on IMDb. It has a runtime. It's been screened. It counts as a movie. Yeah. Is, it Oscar, is it Oscar qualified? <laughs> Probably not. See, I, but, I have this joke. I have this running joke because because basically you can qualify a movie for the Oscars just by renting. They call it four walling here. Uh, so you four wall a movie. You you rent a theater and you show it 
for a, for week. a week. I think it has to be New York and LA, maybe <laughs> whatever it is. You, there's a way to do it. With, least, you know, yeah. you spend like five thousand dollars and you can qualify a movie for the Oscars. It is now eligible to win an Oscar, and um, people do that all the time. Usually with you know real real movies, but like if I had en- <laughs> yeah, right. if I had endless money, I would just Oscar qualify the most in- like n- like literally like video of nothing, like a blank a blank screen running with like the noise of the fan. Like just I would just Oscar qualify like thousands of. If of- we had like five million dollars, we would do so many more. I would just large play scale pranks. I would do so much <laughs> large scale just- pranks all the time. Like like. So as I've been going, th- I gr- like in the last like decade of my film life, I was always just trying to like decipher what people want out of their own lives and their own like filmography. And then I came down to it. I was like, it's really just about your IMDb. Like you tell people <laughs> you're a filmmaker and they want to know everything you did. They don't necessarily want to watch all of it. Right. right. So I like, and you know, like I have friends who have made lots of movies and I was like, man, I could beat you. I could make like 90 movies this month. <laughs> yeah. It's just the credits. <laughs> Like literally, and now that they take YouTube uploads, I can make, I could be, I can have a filmography that's like hundreds of movies long, full length features, <laughs> and nobody is really going to know or say anything different. It's true. Like, it's true. It's like they all qualify as real movies, right? <laughs> yep. If you look at my IMDb, it is a lot of movies, and they all exist. They're all real. But when I look <laughs> at exist. it, I'm like, why is this like? Why is this number so large? <laughs> Because like, to me, it's all just like my normal bullshit. You know, like a lot of our shorts and stuff or music videos, like it's all up there and it adds right. up to a big number. <laughs> but I don't feel like that's a, the number it should be. It should be like three. You know? Yeah. You know, instead, like, it's like 50 something. It's like, oh God. I think I should have five, like five directing credits. Like that's it. Right. Yeah. Everything else I put up there, I'm like, that shouldn't be on IMDb. <laughs> but IMDb lets it happen. Right. So well, this is just as much of a movie as Lawrence of Arabia, and you can't say anything different. So it's is mil- you know? mil- Milk Soda, the soda milk fan That's film. That's on, on IMDb. IMDb, yeah. You know. Is it? Is it? It is. Do you know who the director That's is? That's amazing. Do you know who the director of that movie is? is it a no, who? King Ghidorah the Dog. Uh, That's nice. amazing, I'm not, dude. not a joke. He does wait, have wait. an IMDb page. Could, could me and Mike get an inspiration credit on Oh, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I would totally Definitely. add that. I think you might have writing credits. I think you actually might have a writing credit on it. Oh really? I didn't. I haven't checked. I, in a while. I can't so, remember. Soda milk. The show. I put soda milk on IMDb. Right. So it's on there. Well, that's why I felt the like milk soda. Milk soda also had to be on there. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's amazing, man. I didn't know that. Oh, that's you so know what? Good. I just copied the original credit from the the first episode of Soda Milk. So so Mike has the writing credit. But you, but you, but you don't have a writing credit on it. I mean, I'm happy to add any. I, saw, I didn't write. I didn't write the yeah, first episode. I'm happy so, yeah. to put any any credits you would like on, on there, or you can you can no, just no, no, that's, you can just go do that. You <laughs> could put. I don't. I don't even know what I would get because cinematography inspired by. It was just, <laughs> I mean, is that in this case, come on. Is there an inspiration? I don't could know. give you story by story by. So, <laughs> if you got like. There is an inspiration on YouTube that we originally had. It's a, a guy named Report of the Week. And he's this young guy, kind of fishy looking. He wears a suit and lives in his grandmother's house, and he reviews fast food. And wow. he was the, like, kind of the inspiration for a lot of the stuff me and Mike did. Cause, but he's super famous. He, he got famous reviewing water from Walmart. <laughs> Like he, he he compared distilled water to just like filtered water, and oh and that God. like blew up. And he's like this little like thin guy that wears like a big old timey suit. And he was kind of our like inspiration because you know. I feel like you sent us another video at some point where it was a guy like showing shine. you how to shoe shine. It was like a ten yep. minute shoe shine video. Yeah, I feel like time. that's in the that's in the family. And that I feel like that's that's inspiration. That also kind of like leans toward like check it out with Dr. Steve Brule type of deal. You know mm. what I mean? Like with the. It has that weird, like, uh, what do you call it? Lattice. Yes, like the, him. the like, between two ferns like kind of lattice. People, like, yeah. yeah, like people sitting in a dark void and there's like lattice or some other weird shit behind them that's just like there for decoration. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Trollo Lolo awesome. Lolo guy. This yeah, yeah. Classic like that. internet it's stuff, like that. Right. man. But the difference yeah. with all these is they're not like aware of the humor <laughs> yeah, in the not. thing. No, I mean, no, I think, they're not. Yeah. You know, so, Soda Milk, I think you're you're aware yeah. We are, and we, we definitely had arguments about how, where, and you'll enjoy this, especially Sophia, is I definitely, the only time we ever really got into an argument that mattered was me saying that maybe it should look worse. Because, <laughs> like, and we eventually landed on, we eventually landed on it just being an HD, it can be HD, yeah. it's fine, but, like, 
at the beginning, I was like, no, 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 it should be like, it look, look awful. Like, it should just look <laughs> terrible. Like, we can almost barely see your face. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, some episodes are so low light. But then we decided, like, the joke isn't that. It's not that right. we can't see him or that it's badly. There, It's lit enough. It's not lit properly, but it's lit enough. And it's like the other vlogs that we're making fun of. But I did. At first, I was like, no, no, it should look like absolute garbage. Right. So at least if you see my debacle short, I filled that prophecy with, the fil- <laughs> with that. I, I used I used my worst camera, and I lit it even worse than that. So, well, for, for yeah. uh, Milk Soda... We uh, debated. Shot in 6K. We shot in 6K. <laughs> we, we did, did actually shoot in 6K. <laughs> God damn it! But, but, that's amazing. But we uh, we we had a boom mic that's in the shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, that's good. And there was like a debate that, yeah. about that because I was like, you know, it's funny to have the boom mic in the shot, but like, is it actually too much that there's a boom mic involved at all? In this? <laughs> like, is that is that already too? Well, see you. So you understand the mindset yeah. like of everything, you know, like. We were always talking about like, would, would this this team do this? You know, right. like would they do it? You know, we'd always ask ourselves that. You know, <laughs> these two so, people. But, but yeah. yeah, we did end up with right. the, with the boom mic in and in the shot, and we thought it was funny that it was shot like a little too good and a little too like wide dynamic range and, and stuff. <laughs> like I thought that was a, that, not not that we like really I, lit it well, it, but no. I don't know how much you watched, but I think it's season four is the camera season where the crew was sick with an illness. And so every episode is there's one that's like Mike is literally on the edge of the frame because <laughs> the camera's pointing over here, and there's one that's just too, I just basically made the whole thing out of focus. I filmed I filmed Mike so out of focus you can't see anything, <laughs> and then there's one where it's just his feet, and you know like it was like <laughs> like we did whole episodes where I, I was filming nothing essentially, yeah. <laughs> like just just Mike talking and I'm filming his feet, you know, so yeah like it's good stuff. That's so yeah. Good. We also appreciate li- jokes like that just it. go on for way too long, like are like yeah. um, just t- are taking things to like t- too far. <laughs> like the fact that you did like ten seasons of this is just like you took it too far, and that's what yeah, also yeah. makes it so great. <laughs> we 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 decided we decided that we would go way beyond anyone finding it funny. Yeah, that's that's kind <laughs> but of. But then it always comes back yeah. around, you know. Like it's like funny yeah, is yeah. like on a, in a dip. It dips and then it comes back. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I. Like it's oddly still the like you know I I'm really proud of my shorts but I'm I'm really proud of soda milk because I think that the people it speaks to they really dig it yeah like you I, you guys I yeah, mean yeah. like there are I have other friends too who totally love it Stephen is a big fan of it I'm really proud of that like it's it it, it was a lot of work and we kept up <laughs> that release <laughs> schedule for a year <laughs> like idiots how so, often was yeah. it released now <laughs> it was uh, every Thursday wow. That's Every a lot. Every Thursday for 52 weeks. Yep. That's a lot. Yeah. I love and so, and we Mike can't lives even, an hour We can't away even do me, this podcast so. every week. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, that's right? an accomplishment. And at the time, I had two podcasts going and Soda Milk. So I had, I had every two weeks, I released both of those shows and I had a Soda Milk. I was like, I was hopping back then. You know what I mean? I had shit to do. <laughs> and now, you know, now... I just want to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> so, now it's just yeah. stay alive. Yeah. That's the video game. And speaking of stay alive, one last project that we want to talk about. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been working on a secret quarantine project um, called the Transformations of the Doctors Jenkins, and I think we can say I, I can say the premise of it is that we took uh, some scripts and we sent them out to a bunch of participants, and they each made you know something that is a contribution to this movie. That we will then put together and have a, a feature film out of, right? And so that was something that we, uh, along with Stephen, and uh, I guess we can we can can we say everybody who's involved? Why not? Right? Yeah, sure. Uh, our friend Kate McCoy as well, who I think will be on on a future guest, a near future guest. Yes, and, please have Kate on. Yeah, we definitely will. And um, so we've all been working together on this thing for uh, not too long, but but you know a bit of time, and it's come. It's in post production. Two, two or three months. Yeah, yeah. Well, how like many? That. Okay, so how many filmmakers do you have? Like twenty five. It's about twenty five filmmakers. Twenty five people yeah. have submitted scenes to be in a future film made during quarantine. Yeah, with That's, restrictions like similar. You know, this is the idea was the inspiration of yeah, it, doing a film yeah. that we could do without you know endangering people or people having to. Ha, you know, just use the resources that they have at home, basically, to make something. Yeah. Right. Um, and so Kate is busy editing it, and then it will have some sort of premiere, probably online, probably, probably on Stephen's event. Probably. Too. On, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, he's the expert at this point, right? right? Yeah. He's, done, yeah. he's done a film festival and a film contest. So yeah, yeah. He's Mr. He's Mr. Festive. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, we we don't want to say too much, I guess, but we it's been a fun experience. I I think that everything that we've seen so far is awesome. And I'm actually really proud of my scene. And if it's funny because we were talking about the debacle earlier, and like I know I took way longer than everyone else to edit my shit, <laughs> but I finished editing my scene a week or less actually before the debacle started. And so with the amount of energy I'm working with, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I finally finished it. Oh, I got to make another short. Yeah. <laughs> That was my. So that was. Part, I didn't want to say that earlier, but that was part of my experience. There is like, right, right. I like finished do, editing my thing, and then I was like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta do something else, <laughs> a creative." Oh yeah. God, kill me. It is. It is hard. Yeah. You know, it is really tough in this time to do stuff like that. But we, you know, it's been nice because it even it even, has, even it though has. we felt bad all weekend about actually making it. Now I feel pretty good about like I mean yeah. I don't think the yeah, movie yeah. is the greatest movie ever made but like I feel good that I got to make something I feel good that I'm gonna get to share it with people um, I think it's entertaining enough and like you know hopefully people have fun watching it um, so that feels good to have accomplished that right. in the context of having totally. such so much adversity of like emotion and you know mental state and everything in the current days um, it, I feel uh, you guys have only known me really in the pandemic, which bums me out because I'm not this dark all the time. Like I'm not always like Bleh, like uh, Eeyore, you know. What right. I, mean? <laughs> I feel like Eeyore this year, but I'm really not like that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I mean it's understandable. It's, yeah. it's been a tough time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, a, a tough year. But yeah. uh, back to Jenkins, like I think it's going to be cool. And if you know, if it's not, fuck everybody. It's awesome. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a grand yeah. experiment just getting all these different people together to make something uh everybody in their own respective worlds. Are you guys happy you know, with it's with, cool. with yours? Yeah, I mean, you know, as with all these kind of things it's like <laughs> it's Give you a little enthusiasm, Michael. Uh, you on, know, man. it's an art experiment and um I think it it, it came out fine. I mean, it's like I think I think ours it's is awesome. pretty fun. I got to light yeah. it all giallo y and yeah, uh yeah, yeah. you know, we had glowing things. Yours and, looks easily it's. I mean, like, it's beautiful. Come Thank, on. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I mean, you. I had yeah. fun shooting it, and like, we put the camera in the refrigerator. Like, just like the hacky. <laughs> what, what was the? Uh, I does movie set memes. Are they mad about cameras in the refrigerator? No, there was like a joke camera in the refrigerator. <laughs> there was a joke that was like, what? Uh, f- filmmakers eventually graduate from opening with the alarm clock shot to opening with the inside the, the refrigerator, refrigerator shot. Yeah. <laughs> so so we, that was me this year. We're I the second tier of yeah. uh, filmmaker development. The filmmaking. <laughs> we didn't open. I haven't the done my. I've done my wake up shot, I think, but I haven't done my refrigerator shot yet. We've so. I've definitely used the alarm clock shot before. I can't I can't remember where. Yeah. Well, I've been there. Been there. I don't. Well, it was like, it was a good with, refrigerator shot, Sophia. So. Thanks. I mean, fish yeah. eye. <laughs> it was super wide. I had to like leave the building so I wasn't in the shot. Six point five millimeter <laughs> lens. Hell yeah. 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 All right. I think it was worthwhile. It was a worthwhile shot. Yeah. So um, yeah, we had fun yeah, doing no. it. We had fun doing it. Your it's, footage, your footage looks great. Six so. K, yo. <laughs> we sound so stupid, but we do joke all the time about how we're always filming a six K. But it is true that we're filming a six K, and it is also ridiculous. <laughs> you can't shoot lower on the camera without like it crops the sensor. the sensor. Yeah, yeah why you would have you do to that? The yeah, yeah. You, you have to shoot at six K. So it's not like it's not like we really felt like the movie. Need, the, the movie is like going to be in HD, so it's not yeah. like whatever. I think I said this to you guys. Uh, like I shot my thing for the Jenkins project with my camp with the cheapo camcorder because I just didn't want to focus. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing the thing for the debacle, and I used my phone for one shot, and I was like, "Fuck, I, I probably just use this from now on in these <laughs> conditions." Yeah, not yeah. in normal conditions. Don't yeah. think I'm saying that, but like, <laughs> it looks pretty crisp, and it has all it's, it has autofocus, so I can film myself doing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And it's 4K. It's all about context, I, right? It's all about context. Yeah, it's, it's context. Fine. Like it's fine. Like I think if I make anything, I might make a few more like short things while I'm stuck in this thing, and I think I'm going to use my cell phone. <laughs> and I hate saying it because like we have even made fun of people using their cell phone <laughs> in our like chat, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll use my phone. I, honestly, phone. I see. Damn it! <laughs> I see movies. I see movies at fest all the time that I'm like, it's a, it's a cool movie shot on a cell phone. I mean, it doesn't. I don't think it looks like. As nice as it would look, uh, you know, if they shot it on a, oh, a wide, large yeah. format Alexa or something. But right. like, 
But the movie works. Like, if the movie works, the movie works, right? So it's not like... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do something where I would want it to look not like a cell phone. Yeah, cell phone. exactly, exactly. So, yeah. You like, wouldn't it, Soderbergh it up? <laughs> no, no. I mean... That makes me so mad about yeah, that no, insane movie. Yeah, totally... Yeah. I was so mad. It looked like garbage. <laughs> it did look bad. All right, now that the we're... Low light, the low light isn't good. Yeah, no, why would you do it? Now that Whatever. we've reached the part of the Soderberg. show where we're talking about Soderbergh again... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where where can people where can people find your stuff? I, I know you. Uh, you so, have... uh, I guess everything that like well, number one, you can look up soda milk. Just you, if you type in soda milk, it should come up. Uh, but you can go to my channel. It's youtube.com slash thundergrunt, and on there on the main page, you've got all my short films. I've got I got it all organized. There is uh, my podcast on there. There is soda. There's a soda milk playlist it's all there so it'll take you if you go to my youtube it'll take you to everything let's plug your your current podcast too just really fast yeah. like what are they about oh yeah my, what are they uh, called Thunder and Grunt? what are they about well it's my <laughs> my podcast is just called thundergrunt because it's a single feed multi-show because i want to save money but uh it's thundergrunt.com i do a show uh well i haven't done it since the pandemic but i do a show a bad movie show where we go through the entire plot of bad movies uh, I do a show called Shrimp Night now, where I interview people that will do it. <laughs> the first, the first episode is the Michael Winslow episode from Police Academy, and then I do a show with G- uh, Jimmy George. Uh, you guys are we know Jimmy, yeah, 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 yeah. Jimmy George and Jamie Nash, who Jamie is, he writes movies with uh, Nickelodeon and with uh, Ed Sanchez, Blair Witch Project yeah, guy, yeah. Uh, and he's releasing a saved official Save the Cat book. Nice. Like he's actually he wrote a Save the Cat book in quarantine and it's officially being released. Wow. So I do a I do a, a script podcast with those two guys. That's cool. And they're geni- they're I think they're like geniuses of the, you know, like blockbuster, you know, format yeah. of like, you know, Hollywood writing. So uh, Jimmy has a, a Jimmy has a script consulting uh service called yeah, script, script butcher. Butcher. Com. Yeah, which is really, yeah. you know, he's really cool. He's a, he's a great guy he, yeah. and I know he gives great notes and Really helps people yeah. um, get their scripts in shape. So, yeah, yeah, like the two, like Jamie's a teacher and Jimmy's a uh, script consultant. They're both. <laughs> I'm the everyman on the podcast. <laughs> I'm just the guy who watched too many movies. They're the guys who like, you know, I write, but I don't write like they do. So, um, yeah, I'm, and I'm proud of all those shows. Uh, but you can just get it's one single click. It's Thundergrunt is the podcast, and you get all that with that click. So nice. cool, very well, cool. Thanks for being on, and uh, yeah, dude. Thanks for having. Don't me. forget to watch the debacle, everybody, this tonight. afternoon. And, yeah, tonight. Yeah, the, the tonight, right? And uh, keep an eye out for the transformations of the Doctor's Jenkins, and check out Milk Soda Soda Milk or Soda Milk Milk Soda. <laughs> I always, I always forget which is which, but it's. it's I mean, eventually, you guys are going to remake every episode. That's right. right. Yes, that was that should. was an idea at one point to do like an, <laughs> at least Jesus. the entire season. But I think we we felt We've like moved the on. joke the joke was <laughs> yeah no, the is, jokes like, the it, jokes diminishing said, returns I, diminishing returns unless you went joke. you'd either have to not do it or do it all the yeah, way yeah do every one of them right. yeah, yeah. We, yeah we felt like yeah. it was diminishing returns but anyways <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, thanks thanks a lot for listening and uh, see you on the internet on the flip side on the flip side <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>